present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Jim and the Headless Piper! <laughs> Thank you, son. Oh, you're welcome. Grandad, can you manage me mum's case as well? <laughs> I'll carry the lady's suitcase. You? Carry a suitcase? I don't think you've enough strength to carry the label. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, don't be rude. Well, a right two weeks holiday this is going to be. Oh, that last train journey after we changed at Glasgow. What about the train journey? What a boot it? <laughs> I drank a whole bottle of lemonade and then found out there was no corridor. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm not kidding. If that train had to stop for that sheep on the line. All right, all right. <laughs> Be quiet. Uh, uh, look, my man, uh, we want to get to Lochside Cottage. Ah, uh, in a minute. Tickets, please. I want to see your tickets. Look, here's our tickets. Now hurry up, Porter. It's cold in this drafty platform. Yeah, think about me grandad, Porter. Oh, Mr. Porter, what can he do? He's only got his short kilt on and his legs are turning blue. <laughs> will you shut up? Uh, look, Porter, uh, but will you please tell us how to get to Lockside Cottage? I walk in the place we lie. It belongs to some miserly old skin friend called Sinclair. What's that? <laughs> hey, 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 Mind hey. what you're saying. Hey, Sonny, what's the matter with the old man? He's his brother. <laughs> Who is? The miserly old skin flint, old Uncle Angus. We're going to stay with him and Aunt Flora. Well, I should imagine there should be room for you. Lockside Cottage used to be a pig farm. Oh, wow. <laughs> a pig farm? Aye, that's why they've got plenty of accommodation for their guests. Every pig stays now a bedroom. <laughs> it's the other way around at my pal Ozzy's. Every bedroom's a pig sty. <laughs> Jimmy, now look, my man. Will you just tell us how we get to my brother's cottage? How far is it? Well, the crow flies about five miles. Well, what time does the next crow fly? <laughs> five miles? How are we going to get there? No, uh, well, today you're in luck. If you don't mind waiting a wee while, you can go by taxi. Oh, no. Well, that does it. Hey, hey, Sonny, what's the matter with the old man again? It's you mentioning to Axe. <laughs> He'll have to pawn his bagpipes to pay the fares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a terrible boy. You're just what we want round here to liven the place up for a few days before the winter sets in. Winter? It's only early September. Oh, why, but you're in Highland country, you can. The seasons change very quickly. One day you're looking at a garden full of beautiful flowers, and the next you're shivering with the cold. Aye, I ken what you mean. <laughs> Red roses one day and blue noses the next. <laughs> Give for a nice cup of tea. What about you, Father? <laughs> well, it was something stronger than tea I was thinking about. Oh, where's Jimmy? No, oh, he's still up the road there looking for a taxi. Why didn't Uncle Angus come and meet us in his car? Because the porter was right. My brother's a mean old skinflint. He no doubt want the money for the petrol first. Oh, now don't talk like that, Father. He and Aunt Flora are putting us up free of charge as their guests and Alfie and Susan as well. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Pat, but it's just this hanging about that's getting me down. Oh, here's Jimmy now. Jimmy! Jimmy, is that the taxi down the road? Yes, Mama, I think it's the taxi. It's either that or a dustbin on wheels. Hey, look at it. <laughs> 
He's stopped. He's run out of petrol. <laughs> or his elastic's broken. <laughs> and I'll bet he charges the earth for riding in that thing. Uh, look, I'll have a word with him. Uh, maybe he'll let me off cheap when he finds out that I'm a brother Scotsman. Oh, well, hurry up, Father. Uh, right. Oh, excuse me, Chuck, my friend, uh, but I uh, wouldn't be taking you out of your way. Would you mind running myself, my daughter, and my wee grandson here to the Lockside Cottage? Uh, I take it you can where it is. Your own out of place, mate. Open. <laughs> hey, you're not a Scotty. You're a cocky. <laughs> um, cockney. Yeah, that's right, mate. I'm from the good old smoke, London. Who well, you've got here a bit quick. <laughs> the porter only phoned you half an hour ago. <laughs> Turn it up, son. I live here now. I'm retired. I used to be a London cabbie and I married a Scots girl who was a chambermaid in a London hotel. Yes, well, that's all very interesting, but can we please get on our way? Oh, yes, certainly, lady. If you don't mind waiting a bit. How long? Well, till the steam stops coming out from under my bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mr. Cocky. Yeah, what is it, Sonny? Does Ben Hur know you're using his chariot? <laughs> no, that'll do you, Jimmy. Come on, Pat, let's get in. Right, after you two. By the chickens. <laughs> Shut up, will you? It's all the hills, you know. My engine gets overheated. Holiday makers, are you? Yes, we've come here to see all the excitement and wild nightlife. <laughs> if my granddad can stand it, we're going to let him watch the street lamps being lit. <laughs> oh, be quiet, Jimmy. We're spending a few days with my brother and his wife. They live here in the summer. Oh, I haven't told you about the headless piper. The headless piper? Yeah, he's supposed to haunt these parts. I've never seen him myself, but uh, he's a ghost with no head who strides over the moors playing his bagpipes. Oh, how can he play his bagpipes if he's got no head? Perhaps he mimes to a record. <laughs> Don't talk, silly. <laughs> headless piper, indeed. Oh, look, come on, let's get on our way, <laughs> yeah, right on, Gub. Oh, wait a minute, don't go yet. Yeah, yeah, what, what, what's up, Sonny? Me Uncle Angus has come for us in his car. There you are, Father. He's come, after all. And there you are. What are you doing in this taxi? We didn't know you were coming to the station, Uncle Angus. Uh, no, well, why do you think I spent my hard-earned money on a four-penny stamp to write and tell you? <laughs> well, we never got any letter from you. It should have been there yesterday morning. Well, it wasn't. The postman never came near our house. My mum's right. He didn't call. Because I met him in the street, and that's where he gave me the let. Oh, heck. I knew it. It's that boy's fault. Fourpence for a stamp right down the drain. Peter, aren't you going to chastise that grandson of yours? I'll chastise him all right with my walking stick. I think I'll be making a film with that ghost. The headless piper meets bottomless Jim. <laughs> Alfred? Um, yes, please, Auntie Angus. Um, you, you were saying, Uncle Flora? Oh, the man... <laughs> the man's putty. I, I, I was saying, I always bring these family heirlooms with me when I come up to the cottage, don't I, Flora? Aye, that you do, Angus. A bun, Alfred? Yeah, two lumps, please. I mean, yeah, yes, thank you. Give him a bun, Flora. A ninny. <laughs> I, Mr. Hall, are very valuable, these heirlooms, so why leave them behind in Glasgow to be stolen? I don't know why. What do you mean, why, you <laughs> blethering? Uh, the Angus, Angus, now show him the jewelled dirk. <laughs> I doubt if he'll know what it is. Mr. Hall, do you know what a dirk is? Well, the only dirk I know has got another name. What's that? Bogan. <laughs> <laughs> It's a joke, that. <laughs> a joke. This is the dirk in my hand, Mr. Hall. It's an offensive weapon for taking life, and I'm sorely tempted to use it. Now, now, that'll do, Angus. Alfred is our guest. Alfred is a stupid... Bl I mean... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry my temper got the better of me, Mr. Hall. Oh, that's all right. Uh, hey, Flora, are the others still upstairs in the room? Aye, Angus, they went upstairs to unpack their cases. Uh, Another barn, Alfred? Y yes, please. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely view from this window to that mountain across the lock. Now, here's your barn. Ah. That's snow on the top there. Is it? 
I thought he was icing sugar. <laughs> On the mountain, not the bun, you adult. He did not scare <laughs> Hadn't you better go and put the family heirlooms away in a safe place? It's Mr. Hall who should be put away in a safe place. <laughs> I'll go and do it right away. Oh, is the, is the wee boy about? Who, Jimmy? No, no, he went out in the garden to play. Uh, uh, good. I'll find a safe hiding place where he's out. Oh, Uncle Angus, have you seen Alfie? I don't mention that milk soap of... Oh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's in the living room there with Flora. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Alfie, what have you been saying to Uncle Angus? Yeah, oh, it was a misunderstanding, Susan. I happened to mention the icing sugar on top of that mountain. What? <laughs> Alfie, what have you... Hey, a, a cup of tea, Susan. Uh, no, thanks, Auntie Flora. It's such a lovely evening, I thought I'd go out and get some fresh air. Aye, twilight can be very beautiful in these parts. Susan, why don't you take Alfie in the garden and show him Uncle Angus's late bloomers? Eh? <laughs> Oh, so that's what he wears under his kilt. Would <laughs> <laughs> you mind? Oh, I'm sorry, Susan, it slipped out. <laughs> yeah, but it's a funny one, isn't it? I must remember it for Jimmy. Uncle Angus, where's Nick? No, that's not right. <laughs> well, Alfie, come on. You can go through the French windows there. Thank you, Aunt Flora. Oh, isn't it lovely out here, Alfie? Look at those beautiful flowers. Yeah. <laughs> They're almost as beautiful as you, Susan. And look at those sheep over the fence, Alfie. Yeah, they're almost as beautiful as you. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they are nice, aren't they? <laughs> you, you what, Susan? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, the sheep. <laughs> How dare you call my sister a sheep? She looks more like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> hiding behind bushes and making your stupid noises. What do you want? I want a word with the donkey. Alfie? Yeah? <laughs> I've just seen that taxi driver again and he's just taken an important fare to the country hotel. What country hotel? I'm not talking to you. Alfie, you know the Forester's Inn, don't you? No, I didn't even know he'd been out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the inn down in the village. I, mean, I know it, but who's the driver taking there? Fife Robertson. Well, who's he? On the telly, you know. No, I don't. Alfie, surely you know who Fife Robinson is? He was on television every night with Cliff Mitchellmore. Yeah, he, he was on tonight. Was he? Well, what's he doing in that pub in the village? <laughs> You've got it wrong, Alfie. Tonight is a programme. You, you are, Susan. Alfie, surely you can remember tonight. No. Yeah, I can remember last night, but I can't remember tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, the programme. Susan, are you feeling all right? Oh, I'll tell him. Oh, no, I won't. By the time he understands about tonight, it'll be tomorrow night. <laughs> right. What else did the taxi driver tell you? Listen, Fife Robertson told him he'd come to fix up a programme on the telly about the headless piper. Who? Oh. Fife Robertson. He told the taxi driver he's looking for local people who can tell him about the ghost. They'll be seen on the telly and they'll get two guineas each. Alfie, what am I going to do with your two guineas? <laughs> For the last time, can we go to see Mr. Fife Robertson? For the last time, no. Mr. Robertson is not to be disturbed. But it's important! Oh, that's what they all say. Everyone who wants his autograph. I don't want his autograph. I've got an important message about his programme. From me dad. Uh, your dad? Yeah, Cliff Mitchellmore. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Mitchellmore. <laughs> uh, from the BBC. Yeah, we both are, aren't we, Walter? Walter! The army lad! <laughs> uh, but uh, Walter who? Walter Gabriel! <laughs> Walter? Say mangle wurzels or something. Uh, mur murdle wangle. Wa wangling muzzle. Mur muzzle wurzle. Away with you. That's not Walter Gabriel's voice. Oh, no, not now. It's his day off. <laughs> anyway, we'll go up and see our friend Fifey then, eh? Well, okay. Uh... You can't see him upstairs now, anyway. But I've told you! He's just away out the front door this minute. What? Oh, you, you mean that bloke who just passed me? I thought I 
not a recognised his beard. Oh, you nit. Come on, we've got to catch him. Oh, hey, before you go, could I have your autograph, please, Mr. Gabriel? Oh, hey, you can't write. <laughs> but he'll get one of his pigs to send you a litter. <laughs> oh, dear. Where did he get that one out of the Christmas cracker? Hey, there he is. Oh, Robinson. On the corner. But he's coming back this way. Right now, just leave him to me. What are you going to do? Get him back to the cottage to meet everybody and put us all on the telly. He won't bother with us. He'll be seeing all the important people in the village. You know, the, the council and the vicar and all that. He wants to meet somebody who's seen the ghost of the Headless Piper face to face. Or face to neck. <laughs> somebody who heard the terrible noise of the pipes and has never got over the shock. <laughs> who's that? You. <laughs> Before you saw the piper, you were... Sir Walter MacWalter, now you're daft, Wally. <laughs> I can't pretend I'm crackers. You don't have to pretend. <laughs> but I've told you. I mean, leave it to me. Quiet is here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the new. Are uh, you know the hen is on the Sesonite Deli, Mr. Fife Robertson? Oh, well, my name is Fife Robertson, and I am on the television, if that's what you mean. Oh, hi. I think it was you. You're on the night, the new, tonight, the new, the new. The next news, not on the new. I don't understand. I've come to tell you about the headless piper, and I've brought a witness, Daff Wally, here. <laughs> He's seen the terrible monster floating across the bob, blowing the pipes through his ear holes. His ear holes? Ah, well, he's got no head, you can. Has it, Wally? Wally! No, <laughs> no, no, no head, but heed. Surely the paper's a myth. No, it's a man. No, no. <laughs> oh, I think, no, no, I saw him. Oh, floating on the dog, the bog. <laughs> But I want you to come and meet my uncle. He kens all about the piper. He and my grandfather see him every Saturday night. After closing time. <laughs> your uncle? Now, who might your uncle be? My uncle kens all about the history of Scotland. He has a suitcase full of priceless treasures from olden times. Priceless treasures, you say? Aye, and he's a very important man. Who is he, then? Angus Sinclair, the Laird of Kilcranky. Oh, Jimmy, you're a wee scamp. Fancy telling Mr. Robertson your uncle was the laird of Killy Cranky. Hi, <laughs> and that I owned the Rose and Crown. <laughs> I didn't say you owned it, I said you lived in it. <laughs> Now, look here, my lad. Now, now, Peter, it's just his fun. Anyway, it worked. Fife Robertson's here and we'll all be on the telly at two guineas a time. He hasn't said he'll use any of us yet. He will by the time he's finished drinking Uncle Angus's whiskey in the front room. <laughs> now, now, Jimmy, Uncle Angus is just showing Mr Robertson the family heirlooms. For an hour? It's like when my granddad took Tommy Twig into our front room to look at his old photographs. Well, we did look at the photographs. Yeah, but by the time he came out, you couldn't see the door. <laughs> I'll give you a smack in a minute. Oh, Mother, please. Keep your voice down. Mr. Robertson will hear you. Yeah, and if he doesn't hear me granddad, he'll hear me. <laughs> you know how I yell when I get smacked. All right. But just wait until he's gone, my boy. What's Jimmy been up to now? Oh, why, what he's always up to, mischief. Oh, I'm going to get a, get a bit of fresh air. No, no, Jimmy, you shouldn't tease your grandfather like that. Just you watch your step or you'll be spending the rest of your holiday sitting on a cushion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to save me jokes for the telly. Aunt Flora, has your clock stopped? Because according to my tummy, it's tea time. <laughs> Jimmy. Ah, your tummy's right, son. But I was waiting to find out if Mr. Robertson was staying for tea. Oh, yes, Flora. Angus said to tell you Mr. Robertson would have tea with us. Oh, my word, Pat. Fancy having a television celebrity staying for tea. You'll have another one tomorrow. Who? <laughs> me. <laughs> After they see me on the telly in a kilt, I'll have my own series. <laughs> the Adventures of Bonnie Prince Jim. <laughs> 
because I don't think Five Robertson's going to discover you. You know, you mean he's not having us on his programme after all? Oh, yes, yes. He says Grandad and Uncle Angus are just what he wants. Authentic Highland characters, he called them. But I don't think he's interested in you and Alfie. Even though you did tell him how Alfie's hair turned white the night you saw the headless piper playing bowls with his head. <laughs> well, of all the rotten twists. You mean he's turning me down with all my talent and he's using me granddad and Uncle Angus? That's what he said. <laughs> oh, what's he putting on? A knobbly knees competition? <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. After you, Mr. Robertson. No, no, my name's Fife. Angus. <laughs> right you are, Fife. Uh, sit you down there, man. Yes, yes, sit down and, and I'll bring the tea, sir. I'll just be a few minutes making some toasted scones. I'll come and give you a hand, Flora. Mr. Robertson, it's no good just having two people on your show. You want lots of them, dozens. Hey, but there's not enough money for dozens of people. Ah, that's where I can help you. We Jimmy McClitheroe, the laddie with a hundred voices. Just sit back and get ready to clap. What are you on about, boy? Well, if I do all my voices, I'll be on about two hours. <laughs> First, Robbie Burns. I want some poor the gift of gills to see yourselves as other spears before we see them as seers or self see them seeing us. You see what I mean? That's Robbie Burns. What idiot told you that? Your brother. You're chicken <laughs> Second impression, Chick Murray. <clears throat> Good evening. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the theatre. I always say that whether it did or not. Because it's not likely that anybody in the audience was where I was when the funny thing happened that didn't. <laughs> but it did. I met Jimmy Clitheroe. Hold your tongue, boy. I can't, it's slippery. <laughs> oh, it's no good, my boy. Mr Robertson doesn't want you. No, I'm terribly sorry, but there's no way I can fit you into the programme. My 25th impression. <laughs> there was a soldier, a Scottish soldier, who started out to roam, but left his kilt at home. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. You can be in the programme. Oh, smashing. Oh, I give up. I'm sorry we were so long, but I burned the first loss of scones. Oh, no, 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 it was my fault, Flora. No. Good old mum, you just timed it right. Mr. Robertson's changed his mind. You mean he was brainwashed, you young scurry one? Mind you, I still have some other people to audition tomorrow morning at my hotel. Oh, uh, well, they'll have to come here for you. You're staying here at Indian Flora. Well, uh, yes, yes, by all means. Well, I don't like to impose on anybody. Oh, there's plenty of room. You can take your pig. With four pig styes that haven't been used yet. <laughs> Doing. I'm going to get Mr. Robertson's bag. Yes, you've got his room key, haven't you? Of course I have. And he told you to tell the clerk that he'll be staying here tonight. Remember? Yes, I remember. Well, forget it. You what? We don't want anybody coming round here in the morning for an audition, so don't tell the clerk anything. Just go in the back way, grab the bag and sneak out. Yeah, but, 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 but Mr. Robertson's... Alfie, if you do this right, I'll get you on the programme as well as me. Yeah, will you? Hey, but Mr. Robertson said my accent was no good. The headless piper hasn't got an accent. <laughs> and I've decided he's going to appear. <laughs> Well, how's the television star this morning? Morning, Straggy Neck. <laughs> now, don't be jealous. I'll get you on the telly. Advertising pork sausages. 
<laughs> you look good with an apple stuck in your mouth. All right, all right. Don't start trouble before breakfast. Oh, he doesn't bother me. Oh, yes, breakfast. If I'm going to be a Scotch lad in this television show, I'd better have two helpings of porridge, Aunt Flora. Well, we're waiting for Mr. Robertson to get back first. He wanted to photograph the dawn over the moors. That's why he was going out about 5.30 this morning. Oh, such a nice man. He insisted on having the alarm clock so as not to disturb me. Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to shave with my new electric razor because I couldn't yesterday without the plug. But you haven't shaved. No, no. I found my plug now, but my razor's gone. So you'll have to excuse me having my beard for breakfast. You want milk and sugar on it? Yes, I'd miss <laughs> Shut up. That'll be Mr Robertson now. I'll let him in. I want to tell him how I want my sugar. Oh, we're never going to hear the end of this TV programme. Oh, well, the boy's bound to be excited. Anyway, weren't you in it as well? Jimmy said he'd arranged it. <laughs> oh, ah, if I was willing to have my head cut off. <laughs> Come in then, Constable. Uh, Ma'am, this policeman uh, wants Mr Robertson. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, he's out, uh, but he shouldn't be long, Constable. Maybe longer than you think, madam. Um, I understand Mr Angus Sinclair has some valuable heirlooms here. Aye, that's right. They're in the front room in a case. Uh, would you mind getting them, please, madam? Not at all. I'll just be a moment. Does Mr Robertson want them? Because he said he was glad I mentioned them. Said he wouldn't have liked to have missed them. Is anything the matter, Constable? We'll see. They're gone. Oh, the heirlooms have gone. The case is open with the locks broken. Oh, Angus will have a fit. Now that's what I was afraid of. What do you mean? Well, we've just had word from Glasgow about the man who stayed here last night. Mr. Robertson? Oh, no, no, no. He's, uh, he's somebody who's going around impersonating Fife Robertson. What? Yes, robbing houses, bilking hotels, taking money from anyone who believes his story. Oh, heck, then I was the one who brought... Oh, heck. <laughs> but um, this time we've got something new to go on. What do you mean, something new? Well, this time he had an accomplice. Somebody sneaked into his hotel room and took his bag away for him, loaded with hotel silver, too. I thought it was heavy. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it must have been... Oh, I, but, but, but what are we going to do, Jimmy? Get after him. You take the high road and I'll take the low road. <laughs> Because if we don't find Five Robertson tonight, our next tonight will be in hospital. Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall and Diana Day as Susan. With John Laurie, Molly Weir, John Graham, W.H.D. Joss and Brian Truman. The man who impersonated Five Robertson was Mike Yarwood. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. Well, it was all right in the end, because we didn't know that the crook had pinched off his motorbike, and he didn't know that it was nearly out of petrol. <laughs> we tried to run across the marsh and fell in a bog. We had to pull him up by his beard. They got Uncle Angus's stuff back, so I'm all right. And they never found his accomplice, so Alf is all right. As long as he gives me a shilling a week. <laughs> ta -ra! present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... The Mystery of the Haggis. Hello, are you there, Ozzy? This is your old pal, Jamie Mac Clitheroe, calling you from the highlands of Scotland, and I'm fed up. <laughs> This is Bonnie Scotland, give me horrible England. <laughs> no wonder the sheep have a lot of wool up here. They need it to stop the mutton chops from freezing. <laughs> you got me postcard then? <coughs> did I put a stamp on it? I did. I must be slipping. <laughs> yeah, we're still at Uncle Angus's cottage. You'd 
feel at home here, Ozzy. Used to be a pig farm. <laughs> hey, you would have laughed. I've just been in the garden teaching Daft Alfie Hall how to toss the cable <laughs> with a clothes prop. <laughs> oh, it was useless. Well, you can tell how far he was tossing it, get landing on his foot. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to this afternoon. Alfie's taking me to a kid's play park. I've heard it's smashing. The lemonade, the food and the donkey rides are all free. So all I need is Alfie's two bob to pay for me to go in. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Jimmy. Yeah, hey, where does this clothes prop go? I want to put it back. Just a minute. Uh, you what, Ozzy? You heard the voice? Oh, no. No, it's not a mountain goat. It's Alfie. <laughs> Ozzy? Is he up here on holiday as well? Of course he isn't. He's got more sense. He doesn't have to come up here to see the Loch Ness Monster. He can sit at home and look at his dad. <laughs> hey, you mean that he's not here? He's there? Where, where he's speaking from? And to all that way? You go mad? Ozzy is always mad. No, not Ozzy, your Uncle Angus. Put that phone down. But Alfie, you don't understand. Get you've been, off you've me. You've been on that phone at least ten minutes. Now give it to you. You big daft Nelly, listen to me. Now, you, you shut up a minute. Hello? Hello, Ozzy? If you're still there, Jim, it's no right to ring you all the way on somebody else's phone, so you'll have to get off the line because your time's up. Bye-bye. How dare you take me uncle's phone off me? You're not in our family yet, you know. We could still make our shoes and marry the coal man. <laughs> What's he shouting at you for? Because I took the phone off him. But but he'd been on to Ozzy for at least ten minutes. It'll have cost him clacking us a bomb as it is. But, Alfie, surely you don't expect my dear brother to consider other people? He'll spend anybody's money except his own. I'll spend my own money on you. I'll buy you something to get rid of you. <laughs> Insect powder. Don't you be so rude or I'll smack your face. <laughs> Susan, that'll do. I bet they can hear you all over the highlands. Aye, and we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves on holiday. What's all the row about? It's Alfie, Grandad, having a bit of trouble with his nose. What's the matter with it? He can't keep it out of other people's business. <laughs> now, I've warned you, I'll smack you. All right, Susan. Leave this to your granddad and me. Now then, Alfie, just tell us what happened. Well, but, but I know it's not my place to interfere because it's right what Jimmy said, really. I'm, I'm not one of you. What do you mean? He's not one of us. We're human beings. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Just tell them about the phone call, Alfie. You see, I, I caught Jimmy talking to Ozzy, and Ozzy's back at home, and you know where that is, and he'd be talking for over ten minutes. It's that new telephone system, DDT. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> But I took the phone off him, Mrs. Clither, and hung it up. You did right as well, Alfie. Angus knew he'd gone mad. Angus is mad enough as it is. What are you talking about, my back? Behind my back? Now, now, calm down, Angus. Don't go upsetting yourself. You'll bring on your complaints. I've got a right to be angry. Look at my best kilt here, covered in mud. And tomorrow I'm supposed to wear it when I open the local Highland Games. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, what are you opening tomorrow, Grandad? Just a bottle of whiskey as usual? <laughs> Quiet, boy! I suppose it was you who removed the clothes prop from the line and dirted my kilt. Clothes prop? Oh, eh. What is the matter, Mr. Horn? Clothes prop? But I was using it to practice tossing the cable. Ooh, ever heard of anybody using a clothes prop for a cable? Alfie, you're going balmy. Shut up, you. I'll clean the mud off your kilt, Uncle Angus. Come on, Alfie. And I've got some cleaning stuff in the kitchen here. Well, I'm sorry your kilt's dirty, Uncle Sinclair, but, I mean, did you have to wear it when you opened the games? I mean, couldn't you not go without it? Go, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you get arrested for being, for having, for showing you, <laughs> cheerio. <laughs> oh, away, you blabbering sassanach. No. What's this I heard about Jimmy and a telephone call? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Uncle Angus, but... He used your phone to speak to Ozzy back home in Manchester. What? You young scallywag, I'll murder ye! I'll answer it. Now, now, boy, what do you mean by ringing your silly wee pal on my telephone? I don't mean anything, cos Ozzy rang me. What? what? That's what I kept trying to tell everybody. I wrote this phone number on a postcard I sent to Ozzy and asked him to phone me. Oh, oh, I see. Well, that's different. Mm, yeah. Quite mm. different. <laughs> yeah, it's getting somebody else to make the call. Mm. That shows real thrift. Yeah. Hey, the boy's got some Scots blood in him, after all. And you were all shouting at me and calling me for using the phone. I could get damages for that. All right, all right. Who's that on the phone, Susan? The telephone exchange. 
They say the charge is 12 shillings. Well, I think I'll go and dig your garden, Uncle. Come here, you. <laughs> charge. What charge? The charge for the phone call, except it when Ozzy rang up, reversing the charges. What? That boy. Let me get my hands on him. I will bother him. Oh, heck. Uncle Angus is going to prove I've got Scott's blood in me. <laughs> He's going to spill it all over the floor. <laughs> Get to the play park at this rate. Just a minute, Jimmy. What are you looking for? It's something to write a note on for Susan. I, I don't think she knows where I'm taking you, but she might be back before we are. Oh, I give up. Use that envelope on the mantelpiece. What, this one? Yeah, but it's a clean one, unused. I, mean, I don't want to get in bother with your Uncle Angus again. Oh, he's got thousands of envelopes. He won't mind. Now, hurry up and write your note on it for Scraggy Annie. All right. Now, you shut up a minute. Um, d dear Susan. No. Um, d dearest one. No, sir. Um, my own beloved. Look, just put dear sir or madam. <laughs> With her face, she could be either. <laughs> I shan't tell you again. D dear Susan, I have taken Jimmy down to the kids' play park and will not be back Till I arrive home. <laughs> Wait a minute, you can't write that. Hey, what are you chucking that note on the fire for? I'm burning the evidence. I mean, I'm saving you from getting into trouble. What would I get in trouble for? Uh, using one of Uncle Angus's envelopes. They cost money, you know. Ah, but you said he got thousands of them and he wouldn't mind. Ah, uh, but uh, that was before I remembered about the boiled eggs. What boiled eggs? Well, every morning he has a boiled egg and at the end of the week he takes the shells to the grocers. What for? To see if he can get anything back on the empties. <laughs> you've been so nice about everything, you can pay for me to go to the Highland Games tomorrow. Oh, well, I'm very glad everything's been to your satisfaction. Oh, it has. We must go blackberrying and bird watching again sometime. <laughs> oh, I trust you, Tis. You are? We haven't been black bl 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 <laughs> We haven't been blackberrying and bird watching. I took you to the Clids Play Park. Where well, my mum said I hadn't to go. What? Oh, no, I've done it again. <laughs> yeah, you're always getting yourself in trouble, aren't you? You never seem to learn. Now, look, well, what did your man say? It was after the trouble over Ozzy's phone call. She said, if you get Alfie to take you to that play park while I'm out, I'll murder you. And my granddad said, and I'll murder Alfie for taking you. <laughs> That's why we've been somewhere else. Oh, well, now I know why you burnt that envelope with a message on. They should call you corkscrew. You're a real little twister. <laughs> oh, stop moaning and come in the house. Oh, come on, then. Yeah, they must be in because the back door's open. Right, come in the kitchen and keep quiet. I think I can hear him in the living room. It's strange Peter staying on at the McDonald's house instead of coming back here with us. Yes, I thought that. Susan, could your granddad tell you why he was staying on in the village? He said he and old Mr McDonald were going for a stroll to get some fresh air. Yeah, out of a bottle. Hey, <laughs> shut up and listen. Oh, I think you'd need some fresh air after the shock I gave him before we all went out. What do you mean, Angus, you gave Peter a shock? He offered to buy him a pint. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet, will you? You see, Pat, when I went in his bedroom, I found there are ton halves of your real tickets lying on his dressing table, and the window was open. The wind could have blown the tickets away, and it would have cost him over twelve pounds to replace them. Oh, I heard him saying something about you giving him a fright. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the tickets without telling him and put them in a safe place. Well, where was that? On the mantelpiece in an envelope behind the clock. <laughs> <laughs> What have you done? I, 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 I burnt the envelope with 12 quids worth of... You're not blaming me for it. There's no envelope here now, Uncle Angus. Isn't there? Oh, well, I didn't tell Peter what I'd done. No doubt he's moved the envelope to a safer place. 
That's what you need to be in, Alfie, a safer place. <laughs> Going down to the garage to get Alfie's bike fixed. If this is a garage, it's the first one I've ever seen with three brass balls hanging outside. <laughs> oh, stop moaning. It was a bit of luck me remembering there was a pawn shop in the town. Yeah, but, but it's daft. We'll never raise a 12 quid for them tickets like this. Oh, yes, we will. How much has he given us up to now? Oh, half a crown for my cigarette case, two bob for my crash helmet, and five and a tanner for my fountain pen. <laughs> oh, that's ten bob I've raised so far. Y you've raised it? They're all my things we've pawned. <laughs> well, I I'd help if I could, but you heard what the man said. He can't let me have anything for a bag of jelly babies and a gobstopper. <laughs> well, well, it's ridiculous. We need 12 pounds and all we've got so far is 10 bob. Oh, stop looking on the black side. He hasn't told us how much he'll give us for your wristwatch yet. Oh, I'm uh, sorry about that, but the phone has never stopped ringing today. Uh, now, uh, how much are you expecting me to give you for this wristwatch? Um, eleven pounds ten. Oh, what? <laughs> You're a bit of an optimist, aren't you? I'll advance thirty shillings on it, not a penny more. Oh, yeah, all right, we'll take it. But that only makes two pounds we've got. Um, mister, do you get people coming into my clothes? Oh, yes, uh, sometimes. Oh, quick, Alfie, nip home for your pyjamas. <laughs> I'll nip home for a big hammer in a minute and clout you with it. Oh, no, don't do that. Save all your strength for the Highland Games tomorrow. What are you talking about? That poster over there, look. Muckleberry Highland Games and Autumn Fair. Oh, yeah. The, the one your Uncle Angus is opening. Yeah. Admission, five shillings. Valuable cash prizes to be won. Put in the shot... Tossing the cable. Hey, listen, Alfie. Special ladies' annual event. Guess the weight of the haggis. Prize, ten pounds. Hey, well, fancy that. T ten pounds just for guessing the weight of the haggis. Yeah, and that's how much we still want. Ten pounds. You what? Oh, I see what you mean, but the thing with the odds must be against guessing the correct weight of it. I mean, the only way you could be sure of winning was to know the exact weight beforehand. Exactly. Go and start your motorbike up. We might be going haggis weighing. <laughs> Mister! Uh, say, what is it, Sonny? Uh, who makes the haggis for t the competition tomorrow? The haggis? Oh, uh, Mrs. McMurdo. Aye, her husband's the rail reporter at Muckleberry Halt. Alfie, I know where he lives. In a little cottage near the station. Come on. Hey, now, look, what, what are you up to? Look, all we've got to do is get in his cottage somehow and weigh that haggis. Oh, I see. And what would we use to weigh it with? That thing hanging behind the counter there. See the label on it? Spring balance. Guaranteed to give accurate weights. Five shillings. But to buy that, we'll have to pawn something else to raise another five bob. That's right. So while I'm calling the man over, get your shoes and socks off. <laughs> What have we stopped here for, Jimmy? The Portis Cottage is over the road there. I know that, but we've got to figure out how we're going to weigh that haggis. With this spring balance. Oh, weigh your head. We just can't walk in and grab the haggis. We've got to get old Mac Murdo and his wife out of the cottage first. How are you going to do that? I'm not. You are. I've got it. Go over, bang on the door, and shout for him to bring out a bucket of water. Ah, oh, but I'm not thirsty. A bucket? <laughs> to put out the fire in their coal shed. Hey, that's a good... Oh, no. No, I can't set fire to the coal shed. Why not? Haven't you got any matches? If you haven't, rub your legs together. What? <laughs> I don't mean I haven't got any... They just pretend it's on fire. And when they rush out, I rush in and weigh the haggis. Yes. No. No. I know. Tell them you saw somebody stealing their coal. If they're anything like Uncle Angus, they'll be out there for half an hour counting the lumps. <laughs> Hey, yes, that might work. All right, we'll have to be quick. There's his wife coming out of the cottage. Hey, missus, somebody's been stealing you. <laughs> Shut up, you fool. Let her go, then we'll only have to deal with Dr. Beechin's granddad. Oh, I, I didn't think. How could you? Right, she's turned the corner now. Now go and knock on the door, quick. All right. But, but, but what have I got to say again? About his coal shed. I'll hide round the side of the house here till you get him out. Oh, yes, I remember. Go on, knock on the door, start 
Jack, he won't hold Father Dan before his wife gets back. All right, all right. Um, it's cold, Dad. Y yeah, the, the, the fire. Well, well it, uh, oh. Yes? What is it? Oh, Mr. Tan. Yeah, Dad, your father. Um, but, but it's your coal shed on fire. No, no, that the coal's burning. It's gone. Yeah, he's pinched your shed. I mean, can, can, can I have a bucket of water? A drink? I mean, oh. Come and have a look at your coal. I don't know whether you've been at the Moonshine Whiskey or you're just plain balmy, but for the last time, my coal shed has not been robbed. But, but are you sure? The lock's still fastened, as you can see, if you use your eyes and give your tongue a rest. Ah, well, maybe the thief locked it up again. Oh, clear off, I'm going in my house. Oh, you can't, he hasn't finished weighing it. The coal, I mean. The thief. It's all right, Alfie. I've weighed it, we can go now. Uh, say ta ta to the gentleman. Ta ta, gentleman. Shut up. <laughs> Good riddance of a half mind to report you to the police for disturbing my peace. Oh, he'll be all right now, mister. Uh, I'll take him home. The fool's been on about someone stealing my coal and burning my shed. Is he all there? Well, judge for yourself. Um, yesterday he tried to phone the Queen to warn her about the Spanish Armada. <laughs> Stop moaning, Alfie. We're here now. Yeah, but all the others have been at the Island Games for an hour. Susan's been waiting for me. Well, she's over there near that tent, so you can take her inside and start your own Highland Games. Oh, very <laughs> funny, you. Yeah. If you hadn't forgotten your wallet, I'd have been on time. Well, we had to go back for it. That bit of paper was inside with the weight of the haggis on it. You fancy forgetting that. You forget your head if it was loose. Well, if you forgot your head, it would be a week before you'd missed it. Oh, <laughs> God, shut up. Yeah, hello, Susan. I'm sorry I'm late, but Jimmy forgot his wallet and his head was in it. I mean, the, 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 I mean, the paper with the weight of my leg! <laughs> with what? Uh, the, the weight of his leg. <laughs> we had to weigh him in bits because the, the chemist only had one of them baskets you weigh babies in. <laughs> oh, dry up. Anyway, Mr. Hall, whether you are early or late, it is of no consequence whatever now. I have made other arrangements. Oh, Sir Alfred, <laughs> her ladyship has made other arrangements. <laughs> ladyship? Yes, my sister, Lady Ragbeg. <laughs> Keep out of it, you cheeky monkey. Shut your big mouth. That's telling her. <laughs> I mean, shut your big mouth. What about her? Susan can keep her big mouth open. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, Alfie, I know. Anyway, I'm going. See you later, perhaps. But, but Susan, I was going to walk you around. Yeah, he's bought a new lead. That's right. Now I'll come to you. <laughs> Whilst I was waiting for you, someone else asked if they could escort me. Oh? The police. I said she'd be locked up wearing that tight skirt. <laughs> well, he's not pushing me out. If he's going to take you off me, I'm going to know the reason why. I'll go out with who I like. And at the moment, I don't like you. So goodbye, and don't you dare follow me. Ah, but Susan, ah, but it's Susan. Oh, heck, she's gone. You and your blooming Aggie's number. Oh, hey, I nearly forgot. We haven't bought our ticket yet. Come on to the stand. Just give me the two bob and I'll enter our guess. <laughs> three pounds, six and three quarter ounces. <laughs> Some guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here, take your two, your two. You know, all oh, oh, it. Oh, Jim. What? I've left all my money in the house. You know what, you big stupid... And the way you went on at me about my wallet. I'm sorry, I'll have to go back for it. You can't, there isn't time. They close the stand in about 20 minutes. Oh, heck, it's no use asking me mum and my granddad. I'm in their bad boots. And how you've got an upset scraggy neck, she's no good either. Yeah, it was you who upset scraggy neck, uh, Susan. <laughs> hey, here's the answer coming towards us. Oh, well, your Uncle Angus? No, me Aunt Flora. Me Uncle Angus wouldn't tell you the time if he owned Big Ben. <laughs> hey, he's not so bad. You what? He gets Aunt Flora to read the paper out loud so he won't wear his glasses out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, how can you ask her with him there? I can't, that's why you have to keep him busy. How? Oh. Talk to him about the speech he made when he opened the games. I, I didn't hear him make a speech. I know, 
that he was making it while we were on our way back to the house for my wallet. But he won't know we weren't here. How can I talk about something when I don't know anything about it? You've been doing it for years. <laughs> anyway, shut up. Here they come. Hello, Uncle. Uncle. Hello, Jimmy. It's Jimmy and Alfie Angus. So I see. Let's go back to the refreshment. <laughs> now... Shut him up about the speech, Alfie. But how? Flatter him, butter him up a bit. It's easy. Your mother and your grandfather are over the other side, Jimmy. Oh, good. I mean, uh, are they? Well, I'll see him in a bit. Uh, Uncle Angus, hmm? Alfie wanted to ask you something. Oh, yes? What is it? Well, it's about your speech, but it's private, so um, Aunt Flora and I'll go over to the haggis stand. ta -ra. Oh, yes, I do want a ticket. I'll just be a minute, Angus. Oh, yes, see you, Alfie. Don't forget about the butter. <laughs> Are you buying butter for something? No, 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 it's for you. I mean, um, I mean, up. Get to flutter by. Get flutter up. No, but nothing. <laughs> if that's your question, the answer is a lemon. Pardon? Um, I'm sorry, but it's difficult to understand you sometimes. Me? Me? <laughs> Of course, everything you say is crystal clear. Ah, yes. Well, that's because I speak proper. <laughs> I mean, English, not like you in a foreign accent. Foreign? You're such an ach. Exactly. You see, it's all right talking funny when you're a native, but I'm not. I'm civilised. I mean, I'm... I mean, I'm from England. I could speak English when I was a baby. What went wrong? Did the nurse drop you? You up? <laughs> I could understand a hot and dog better than I can understand you. Ah, well, that's because you both speak the same language. <laughs> Competition. All right, all right. What are you getting so excited for? Hello, Flora. Hello, Pat. Hello, Mr. Clitheroe. Because <laughs> I've won it. Uh, I will win it. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I might. Now, don't you be counting your chickens before they're hatched, Jimmy. Hatched? This chicken's plucked ready for the oven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're always the same. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the announcement for the haggis competition. Good. You clear the way for me, Alfie. After we pay the lucky winner ten pounds, I'm happy to announce that the local charity will benefit by over fifteen pounds. Oh, get on with it! Well, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. If he does, I'll suspend him from a pole. <laughs> the correct weight is three pounds six four and, and three quarter ounces. And the winner is Mrs. Annie McDougall. It's a fiddle, a twist. Somebody switch the haggis. Shh, look, everybody's looking at you. But it was three pounds, six and three quarter ounces. What do you mean? Well, it was last night. I mean, I think. <laughs> Our thanks are due to Miss McMurdo, who made the haggis at her own expense. I'll give her Mrs. Mac... Miss... Miss McGood... Oh, aye, that's right. Her mother has always made it before, but this year she let her daughter do it. Oh, heck, that blooming bloke in the pawn shop. Ah, oh, well, clever fellow, what can you do now? It's what you can do that matters. You what? If you win every event in the games, you'll just about raise the ten quid. <laughs> now, let's see the programme. What do you mean, I'm not in any event? You soon will be. Here we are. First, tossing the cable. Oh, I think I've twisted me back with that blooming ball. Don't worry, you can straighten it out now. You have to spin round when you're throwing the hammer. Yeah. Oh, no. Come along, come along, my bro lads. Surely someone will wrestle our local champion, Robert McGregor. Come along, let's have a volunteer. The prize is five pounds. Right, you've got one. Get stuck in, Alfie. <laughs> I can't do island wrestling. That's all right. He doesn't know you can't, and I won't tell him. <laughs> He's over six foot. Look, Susan's by the mat there. She'll bring you luck. Robert might throw you straight into her lap. <laughs> Drink this water. Oh, my hands. Pull me back. Oh, 
booming that. How's your left foot? <laughs> well, my foot's all right. Oh, well, you've got something to be grateful for, then. Oh, shut up. If I wasn't dying, I'd thump you. What's all this? You all right, Alfie? Oh, goodbye, Mr Sinclair. I think you'll have to bury me in Scotland. No, no, you'll be all right. But what possessed you to wrestle Robert McGregor? Wrestle? You don't call that wrestling. Robert shook hands and Alfie submitted with a broken wrist. <laughs> Don't be funny, it was your daft idea. I told you we'd never raise £12 for railway tickets. What railway tickets? Uh, that, um, uh, Alfie burnt our tickets, he burnt them. So I was trying to raise the money to keep him out of trouble. What, you little fiddler. Our tickets? Well, they're here in my wallet. Look, there you are, all safe and sound. But, but, but I threw them on the fire. I, I mean, the envelope. I, I mean, Alfie did. The envelope. Uncle Angus put him in on the mantelpiece. Oh, I took them out of there as soon as he left the room. Uh, what? <laughs> you mean I didn't burn them and Alfie needn't have gone in, in the games? I needn't have hurt me back. Oh, my head. Oh, my neck. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Still. And... I spent my money. I pawned me things. Alfie, take it easy. You're ill. Hurt. <laughs> remember? Dying, remember? I'll live long enough to murder you. I'll show you some island wrestling. Help! I'll get up! Oh, I'll know you got my granddad sent for the vet. Cloud you with your claymore. Stick your back pants in his ear. Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall and Diana Day as Susan, with John Laurie, Molly Weir, John Graham and W.H.D. Joss. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. shock Alfie turning nasty. I didn't think he had it in him. Well, there's only one thing for it. We'll have to stop his porridge. ta -ra! present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... For my next trick... Uh, now then, boy, you are James, uh, James... Uh... Clitheroe, sir. Oh, yes, yes. And your, your, um, your friend is Oswald Higgin... Uh, Higgin uh... Uh, bottom, sir. And you're the new games master, Dolly... D Dolly... Uh, uh, Dolly Moore, Mr. Dolly Moore. Oh, yes, dithering Dolly Moore. <laughs> uh, you are no doubt wondering, uh, wondering why I've um, uh, brought you out here in the country, um, country... Side, um... sir. Well, I'll bet it's not to pick dandy, um... Lions? Oh, no, certainly not. <laughs> No, I, I, um, I, uh, I uh, need your assistance with the paper chase I'm arranging for the boys next, uh, next, um... Pancake Tuesday, sir. Uh, no, Friday, Friday. <laughs> now, don't be funny. I shall require your help. That is why I am showing you the course. I've mapped it out on this piece of paper. Uh, starting from this point here, this clump of, uh, uh... What's that noise there, Clitheroe? Why, it's, um... A cow, sir? <laughs> that little fox terrier there, his lead appears to be caught round those, those, um... Oh, come on, sir, we'll help get him free. Ooh, he's got no name on his collar. Who are you, doggy? Hey, stop licking me like that. Hey, get off! You'll get me chucked out of the black hand gang for having a clean neck. <laughs> A good dog now, a good dog. Let me pat your, pat your... Uh, oh, dear, he's growling at me. I should pat the other end, sir. <laughs> the end that doesn't bite. All right, Clitheroe, now now I've shown you where the race will start. Uh, you can, uh, you can, you can um, tr trace the route yourself and see me in my study tomorrow about one. What? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, uh, that's lunchtime. Better make it two. What? What? And, uh, what's the time now? It's just turned four. What? Hey, did you notice that, sir?
sir. Every time you said a number, the dog barked it. Yes, yes, I, 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 I do believe you're right, boy. Yeah, he counted the numbers. Perhaps he's a performing dog. Hey, if he is and he's lost, I'll bet his owner would give a nice reward to get him back. Well, uh, let, let's try him with another number. Um, uh, 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 six. He said six. <laughs> House. You'll be all right in here. <laughs> you mustn't know you're here. I'm not allowed to bring dogs home anymore. It annoys me granddad, because the last one I brought home was a St. Bernard. And it had nothing in its brandy barrel. <laughs> now, I'm going to shut you in now, so don't make a noise. I'd better look in the paper, in the lost and found column. Come on, Jimmy. Tea's getting cold. Come in, Grandad. Oh, is that tonight's paper you've got there? Aye, it's just come. Now hurry up and get your tea. It's uh, fish cakes. I know it's fish cakes. It's always fish cakes. I've eaten that many fish cakes. Every time I go to Blackpool, my tummy goes in and out with the tide. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen to stop complaining. Oh, all right. Can I have the paper now, Grandad? I don't like your reading at table. What do you want the paper for? Well, to look for another one for a lost dog. A what? To look for a lost dog. A bomb. Woof, woof. Just stop it, Jimmy. Did you say a lost dog? Um, yes, ma'am. A very clever little dog. He can count numbers and do lots of tricks. Who found him? Um, a lad in our class at school found him. And, um, this lad thinks he might get a big reward for him. Well, I'll look in the paper for you. Uh, what sort of a dog is it? Oh, usual sort. Four legs, two ears. <laughs> Sniffer at the front end, wagger at the back. <laughs> oh, dear, you and your jokes. What colour was the dog? Uh, brown and white with a black patch over one eye. This lad who found it thinks it's a performing dog. Well, there's nothing in the lost and found column. Wait a minute, though. I've seen a dog like that at some theatre somewhere. In a variety show. Is it a fox terrier, Jim? Yeah, that's right, Grandad. Smooth haired, white paws. Aye, I remember now. What was the name again? Oh, yes. The Amazing Abdul. That's a funny name for a dog. <laughs> that was his master. A magician in an eastern clothes and a turban did conjuring tricks. His best trick was where the man muzzled and blindfolded him. He put him in a sort of box with one side made of glass and, and you could actually see the wee dog stand on a stool and open the door himself from the inside. Oh, that was clever, Father, I must say. Oh, aye. Mind, all the dog had to do was lift the latch. It was like the one in our wash house door. Well, I think it was very clever getting out of the... out of the... Oh, heck! <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, uh, nothing, ma'am. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> What's that noise? Uh, me, ma'am. It's them fish cakes. <laughs> <laughs> dog now, Alfie? Yeah, in the back kitchen, eating me out of house and home. <laughs> your your granddad said you got to take it to the police station. What did you bring it here for? Because it'd be cold and hungry in the police station. Nothing to eat but a policeman's truncheon for a bone. <laughs> I know you. You want me to look after it and feed it while my mum and dad are away. No, I don't. The man's coming here for it tonight. I fall for a lot of your tricks, but I'm not daft all the time. For once, I'm putting my foot down with a firm idea who's coming here tonight. You see? The amazing Abdul. Albert Grimshaw's his real name. He said he'd be here at seven. That's what they told me when I called back at the Hippodrome. I bet that's him now. I'll go let him in, Jimmy. Uh, right, Alfie. I'll go and tell the dog his master's here and give him a biscuit. Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, hello. I can't see you so well in the dark, but you're very welcome. Shall I call you Albert or the amazing Abdul? 
Well, you can call me Susan Clitheroe. Oh, that come in, sir. You let me get Susan. <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> yes, I called in to tell you I'm working overtime tonight. I'm just on my way back to the office. Oh, I see. Y Jim is here. Well, what's he doing here? He's giving the dog a biscuit. Uh, g giving himself one. Oh. A dog biscuit. <laughs> But, but are you coming in, Susan? No, I can't stop, Alfie. I thought I'd just let you know that if you came round to our house tonight, you'd be wasting your time. What, you mean no snogging? Oh, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd be out working over there. Yes. Well, I'd better go now, Alfie. Alfie, don't hang about out there. Bring the old bloke in here. I can't. The old bloke's just going. I mean... <laughs> it's very nice to meet you in a... Oh, this isn't Abdul the Magician, it's Susan the Old Witch. <laughs> do, cheeky. Yes, yeah, Susan just called to tell me she's going to work, and don't call her an old witch. Do you want me to run you downtown on my bike, Susan? Oh, don't bother, Alfie. The stop's only just across the road. Which one do I get here for the Market Square? A number 47 broomstick. You get the 47 broomstick? <laughs> oh, fuck you. you. You've caused me enough bother for one day. What's he been up to now? L lumbering me with his blinking fox turrican behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alfie. I was aiming for your mouth. <laughs> well, uh, cheerio, Susan. Oh, excuse me, miss. Uh, do some people called Hall live here? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, good. Well, uh, where is he? <laughs> Where's my little butch? Who's he? Who's Butch? Well, he's a little... Oh, uh, he's Alfie's dad, Butch Hall. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. I'll see you tomorrow, Alfie. You're yeah, right, Butch. Yes, Susan. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, Come in, Mr. Abdul. Oh. Butch is safe and sound here, and I'll see that the reward money's well spent. Give him time to get in the place. But it's nice to meet you, Mr. Abshaw. Grimble, do, bub, 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 bub. You know, I've never met a magician before. Neither have I. Hello, Mr. Magician. How's tricks? <laughs> How's tricks? <laughs> it's a joke. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> Still, you know, I'm very glad you asked me about me tricks. I've got a few in my case here, you know. Yes, I always welcome a chance to practice them, they say. <laughs> Have you ever seen me work? <laughs> no, not that I like to. Oh, well, now you can see me tomorrow night, you see, because I've got another booking at the gas workers' club. <laughs> yes, 15 guineas and all the coke I can eat. <laughs> oh, get on with it. <laughs> Get on. Uh, well, now, I shall come on, do you see, in me Eastern Clubber, eh? and the act will go something like this, do you see. Now, this is what I shall say. Greeting, salams, and watcher. <laughs> now, for me first trick, I require two new ladies. Is there a hen in the house? <laughs> <laughs> That's my first joke, is it? <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> I shall also require the services of a volunteer from the audience. Anyone will do. And to complete this amazing trick, Abracadabra and Sim Salabim. Thank you. <laughs> hey, that's marvellous. I never knew till now I've got eggs in me, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a good trick, that. Mr. Abdul, uh, uh, what about Butch? Oh, of course, my friend. The moment you've been all waiting for, isn't it? Of course, yes. The duet. You, what, you mean you and Butch sing together? Oh, my word. Yeah, you, you like this, you know, yes. Now, are you ready, Butch, old friend? <laughs> Ah, that's right. Now clear your throat, then. <laughs> oh, splendid, splendid. Yes, off we go now. <laughs> Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow. Wow. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow. Wow. I've got a little cat and I'm very fond of that. All together now, Butch. But I'm rather the bow. <laughs> How about a big, nice round of gunfire for Abdul and Butch? Yeah, yeah sure enough, it was very good. You take a bow, Butch. Butch, what are you standing by the back door for? He wants to go out. <laughs> now you watch him tell us what for. I can tell you what for. He heard you singing and he wants to be sick. <laughs> you be quiet. What do you mean he'll tell us, Mr. Abdul? Well, now, listen, 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 now. He'll give one bark for walkies 
and two marks for the other thing. <laughs> Which is it, Butch? <laughs> it's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's urgent. <laughs> Take him then. Yes, all right, Mr. Hall, but just keep a tight hold on his lead, you see, and you'll be all right. Just keep a tight hold on him. You're all right. Just keep a tight hold on this honey, Mr. Hall. Just keep a tight hold. You twit, Alfie Hall. I'm sorry, Jimmy. You ruined everything. Just when I got a tight hold on the ten bob note he gave me for a reward. Oh, I'm sorry, but he went for next door's cat over the wall. Abdul told you to hang on to the lead. Well, I did when he dragged me across the lawn over the rhubarb through the nettle, but when I hit my head on the oak tree, I had to let go. <laughs> yes, and I had to let go of the ten bob note because he wanted it back. It's not in any of the gardens, and I don't mind telling you I'm very worried. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Abdul. Yeah, well, so you should be. I mean, I can't work without Butch tomorrow night, so that's 15 guineas up the swanny. <laughs> yes, and anything can happen to the poor little thing. And, oh, is a stranger in this district? Oh, d don't worry, Mr. Abdul. Yeah. We'll find Butch before tomorrow. Yes. Even if Alfie has to search all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any sign of Butch, Alfie? I can't see anything, never mind, Butch. Well, climb further up the tree. If you get to the top, you can see for miles. Yeah, it's not safe. I'm not a monkey, you know. I know, but if you don't find Butch, you'll be a dead duck. <laughs> hey, what are you doing on my lawn? Oh, heck. Get down, Alfie. It's the farmer. Jump down. I can't jump from this height. I break my neck. Oh, hey, oh. See? You don't know what you can do till you try. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand. Oh. Now then, what's going oh. on? What were you doing up my tree? Looking for Red Dog. <laughs> Very funny. I suppose it had a nest up there full of pups. Uh, the dog ran away, mister, and we couldn't see him from down here. So I thought I'd look for him up the tree. Not him up the tree, but me up so I could see him down here, wherever he is, but I couldn't. It's up the pole you should be. <laughs> he is. Look, mister, we lost... I know, I know. As a matter of fact, I did see a dog earlier. A fox terrier. Brown and white, I think. Oh, where is he? Oh, he was running across the field towards the farm buildings over there. Oh, thanks, mister. Come on, Alfie, quick. Now, quiet, Alfie. We'll go straight up to the bathroom and get you cleaned up. Oh, I feel awful. I'm all wet. Well, that's nothing fresh. <laughs> Fancy falling in a duck pond. <laughs> Why didn't you look where you were going? Yeah, how could I when a pig was chasing me? <laughs> well, the pig didn't go in the pond. Went round it. Fancy being dafter than a pig. <laughs> I thought the pig was a dog. I mean, butch, I mistooked it. It was brown and white. So is a hen, but you don't feed it dog biscuits. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Alfie, is that you and Jimmy? Uh, yes, Mr. Sinclair. Hey, Jimmy, it's your granddad. Are you sure it's not a pig in a kilt? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you are. Uh, come in here, the pair of you. Right, granddad. Alfie, don't mention the dog. All right, I'm not daft. Now, uh, what's all this about a dog you've lost? Yeah, we haven't got it. You had it. You lost it. It's a pig. <laughs> Alfie, you're soaking. How did you get so wet? It's raining heavy. In the duck pond. It's raining. <laughs> but I'm on the ducks. I, I mean, I, I fell off a pig up a tree. <laughs> a pig was up a tree? Oh, not a pig. It, uh, it, uh, it was uh, in the duck pond. You rescued it, didn't you? Yes, it, the, the duck was drowning. I mean, <laughs> oh, never mind that rubbish. Have you found the dog? Dog, Grandad? My dog that he lost. Oh, heck, it's the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> How did you get here? Well, I didn't fly here on my magic carpet. I walked here in the rain looking for my butch. Well, but how did you know where I lived? Oh, well, your friend Mr. Hall told me. Oh, did he? <laughs> Come here, friend, while I dry you out. In the gas oven. <laughs> Come on, Alfie, open this door. 
Oh, just one pint of milk, please. My mum and dad aren't here. And you're not all there. Have you found the dog? Oh, it's you, is it? No, well, I've been in and out of bed all night. Yeah, every time I heard a noise, I came out in the street. A policeman nearly arrested me at two o'clock this afternoon, this morning, I mean, for creating the disturbance in my pyjamas. <laughs> That's a funny place to create a disturbance. <laughs> There you are, Mr. Hall. I've got something belonging to you. It's pyjamas. <laughs> now, shut up. What do you mean, missus? Well, while you were out last night, no doubt enjoying yourself, a poor little dog was shivering and whining on your doorstep in the rain. It was Butch. You ought to be prosecuted. I never thought you were cruel. I knew you were stupid, but not vicious. He can't help it. Anyone could help being cruel. I meant being stupid. <laughs> anyway, have you still got the dog? Oh, yes. It's been in front of my fire all night, warm and dry. And I've been out all night, frozen. <laughs> but that dog should be prosecuted for cruelty. Oh, shut up. Mrs. Uh, can we have the dog now, please? Yes, you can, after you've paid me five shillings. Five bob for one night on the mat? <laughs> Fillet steak for a dog? Well, what do you give your husband? Dog biscuits. <laughs> Is this the old man's caravan, then? Of course it is. Why do you think Butch was trying to pull you under the door? Oh, shut <laughs> up. Come in. <laughs> the door's open. Hey, hey, that's funny. He's talking in his sleep. That makes two of you. Come on in. Hello, Mr Grimshaw. Oh, you're still in bed. <laughs> Did we wake you? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I've been awake for hours. Oh, you're breathing, Eddie. <laughs> oh, you found Butch. Oh, my little Butch. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> That's it. All right. Yes, all right. Yes, yes. Now, don't buy it, don't it. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, go and say hello to the general. The general? Yes, that's him snarling on the floor over there. Yeah. Is Butch's father. I thought you were Butch's father. I mean, it's a... Oh, hey, it's a dog. The, the general, Jimmy, Butch's father's a dog. What did you expect, a donkey? <laughs> I didn't know you had two dogs, Mr Grimshaw. Oh, well, the general was the original one in the act, you see. Oh, oh he's retired now, of course. He's very old, yes. you say. Yeah. Yes. yes, he's 15, you know. That's like a man of 95. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, General, say hello to my friends. <laughs> General? General? Oh, he's getting past it, you know. <laughs> Liver and bacon. It sounds like me granddad coming to on New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> hello, General. Hello, doggy. Do you like liver, then? I think he fancies a bit of rum, Palfy. <laughs> oh, he's, he's only playing, you know. He used to growl like that in the act, you see. Yes. He taught Butch everything he knows. Oh, he did. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. Now, watch this. Now, yeah. now, watch this. Count, General. <laughs> Ready? One. Woo! <laughs> Three. Woo! 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 You see? Woo! <laughs> yeah, he may be a bit slow. But I said three. Yes. He's very good. Oh, that's enough, General. Yeah. He's a very clever. Oh, stop it, you dodging old fool. <laughs> Of course, I forgot, you see, he's wanting his reward. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Alfie, give him a bone. 
Roll your trouser leg up. <laughs> Shut up and let the dog talk. Well, now, here's a dog biscuit, old son. Alfie, say thank you. Thank you. Belt up. <laughs> Oh, yes, poor old general. Uh, you know, Sonny, I, I don't think it'll be long before Butch and me are taking the general on his last walk. I think Butch will be on his own coming back. <laughs> see the vet, a uh, doctor, I mean. Oh, I've seen him, I've seen him. A neighbour sent him over today, told me to stay in bed for a week, silly old fool. How can I? Why not? Because the show must go on. <laughs> oh, tonight's the only engagement I've had in a month. I can't miss that. Uh, where am I going to get money for my dog biscuits? Uh, I get through a packet of dog biscuits a day and a pound of scraps and two bones. Uh, well, you haven't lost your appetite anyway. <laughs> oh, you, you mean the dogs? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Grimshaw, you shouldn't go out working with that bad cold. Oh, I don't like it. It's too late. Too late to be sympathetic now. I, I wouldn't have been ill at all, you know, if I hadn't been out in the rain searching for Butch. Yeah, it's all uh, your fault, Alfie <coughs> letting Butch run away from you. Cause I should have known when I saw what was on the dog's lead. What do you mean, what was on the lead? There was a dog at one end and a goat at the other. <laughs> Don't sound very friendly, Butch. Still, they'll like you. When you finish, they'll be asking for your poll mark. Uh, please, please, order now, order. Right, I'll have a pint. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a right one there, Butch. I wish you could get a look at him. I'd like to see if his head's as big as his mouth. Uh, quite please, ladies and gentlemen, it's my proud privilege to present the amazing Abdul. Here he goes, Butch. Come, did you hear that comic out there? I'd like to see Abdul saw him in off. <laughs> Greetings, all ladies and gentlemen. I bring you magic from the land of the Sphinx and the Camel. But I hope when you see my tricks, you will not be like the Camel and get the um. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Has he got any more jokes like that? Yeah, the old man wrote ten down for him. <laughs> old man? Which old man? Oh, old Mr Grimm. Um, his dad. Yeah. Well, he better get some of his own. I'll be in the dressing room if you want me. First, the disappearing egg. I take the ordinary egg and put it on this plate. I put an anchor over it and weigh my wand and make... <coughs> and make... <laughs> and make scrambled egg. <laughs> oh, the nit. Stand by, Butch. I think you'll be needed in a hurry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, here is a tray on which are three empty glasses and an empty jug. I will pour beer from the empty jug into the glasses by magic. I raise the tray. Look, nothing in the glasses, nothing in the bottle, nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> nothing in his head. <laughs> oh, heck. Here we go, Butch, before they lynch him. Ah, here he is, Butch, the educated dog. Now, we need your master. Give me the Butch. How many are two and two? Run! 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 Correct. Run! 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 Daddy would buy me a bow wow. Daddy would buy me a bow wow. I 
got a little cat and I'm very fond of that. Doggy. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Nothing, Abdul's pants have just come off. Well, get me out of here. Get, get, get me away before the audience catches me. After what you've done, there's only one thing left for you. What do you mean? There's a bus leaving the club in five minutes. Be under it. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall and Diana Day as Susan, with Derek Guiler, Jack Watson and Rosalie Williams. The dogs were played by Percy Edwards. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. weren't after Alfie's blood. After the way the dog ripped his trousers, they were after him to do an encore. <laughs> so the manager paid him and we paid Mr Grimshaw. Made me think, at 15 guineas a time, Alfie could make a fortune in the clubs, for me. I wonder where I can buy a dog and a hundred pairs of trousers cheap. <laughs> That adventure of the Clitheroe Kid was first broadcast last October in the Light Programme. We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... The Evils of Tomato Juice. <laughs> Well, he hasn't given you much notice, Alfie. When's this pal of yours getting married? Yeah, who, Jack Turner? Hmm. No, this Saturday. And he only found out the other day that his army pal can't be his best man, so Jack had to fix up a replacement, uh, you know, in a hurry. So, so he can get splashed and be off on his honeymoon. He's going abroad with a dozen naffy girls. On his honeymoon? No, not Jack's pal in the army. They're sending him away in the mail. He's being delivered, addressed, shoved through a letter. <laughs> Posted. Do you know, ever since it happened, I've been all confused. <laughs> oh, strange effect. Fancy Alfie being confused. <laughs> That'll do, Father. On top of worrying about taxes and the ring, I've had to get myself fixed up with a top coat and a tall hat. Yeah, I've got to wear a tail under my hat. No, I mean, <laughs> it, it has a tail on it. Uh, have you hired a suit, Alfie? Yeah, but I don't get it till tomorrow. It's got to be let out a bit around my back, around, me, around the seat, a bit around my sit up where, where I keep my wallet. <laughs> I'm getting the hat today, though. Jimmy's collecting it for me. One large hat in one large hat box. Sign this bit of paper, please. Where? Where it says Big Ed. <laughs> Stop it, Jimmy. It's Alfie's delivery note from the shop, man. Well, I'll give it to you, and not so much of the Big Ed. I was only joking, Alfie. Your hat's not all that big. My pal Ozzy got it on dead easy. Jimmy, what was Ozzy doing with Alfie's top hat on? He was doing a Fred Astaire. Ozzy saw him in an old film on the telly and he did one of his dance routines. Well, I liked it, but Charlie Thompson didn't like it. Why not? He had to be Ginger Rogers. <laughs> hey, uh, let me look at me hat. I bet it's filthy. Put it on, Alfie. If he's dirty, I'll murder him. Yeah, there. Uh, how does it look, Mrs Clitheroe? Well, just come over here into the light. Yeah, right. Oh. Hey, Grandad. Look at the Alfie in his top hat. <laughs> if he walks in church on Saturday with that on, they'll have to sing three hymns while the vicar stops laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Susan. We, we were just trying me hat on. It's yes. the one I'm wearing at the wedding. Yes, Susan. Alfie's the worst man. <laughs> no, he's the best man. If he's the best, the bridegroom must be a right drip. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell you again? Alfie, I'll just go and get these few marks out of the hat for you. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Clitheroe. In the time you were making a move, Father. Eh? 
Oh, hi, Pat. Hi. Uh, excuse me, Alfie. I've got to go and see my pal Tommy Twig about some gardening. Yes, and guess where they're going to fill the watering cans? <laughs> the Rose and Crown. <laughs> hey, I'm going in a pub tonight, Mr. Sinclair. J- Jack's having his stag party tonight. Ooh, my granddad's always going to stag parties. That's why it looks like a red-nosed reindeer. <laughs> all right, all right. That'll do now, Jimmy. And you be careful when you start drinking, Alfie. Don't overdo it now. Oh, don't worry, I won't. I'll keep sober. Yes, Alfie, and remember me granddad's advice. When your legs buckle under you and your head starts to spin, don't have any more. Unless somebody else is paying. <laughs> Go on, Alfie, tell us that funny thing old Sinclair says. You, when your head buckles under you and your legs start to spin, have some more good I'm paying. Right, good stuff when I'm drinking. <laughs> and, do, do, do you know what it is? It's 95% proof tomato juice. Charlie, what have you been putting in his tomato juice? Nothing, except for a double measure of vodka. <laughs> yeah, well, well, turn it up, he's my best man on Saturday, you know. Well, so what? He's got two days to go. Should have sobered up by then. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you all a treat, I think. Right. Me. This will turn fire <laughs> engines out. Oh, we danced on the night we were wet. <laughs> All right, Benjamin, I'll jiggly, that'll do. We danced, oh, we danced, and we danced. What, what did he call me, Jack? He called me a funny name, I'll thump him. <laughs> Shut up, it's, it's the landlord. I knew he'd be over when you started singing. Oh, he wants to join in, does he? So come on, then, landlord, you and me will give him a quartet. Oh, I we danced. On the eight, by, by the way, landlord, has anybody told you you'd tell smashing to move to jams? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, come on, come on, about this singing. All oh, right, it's for me pal Jack here. I'm, I'm singing him a wedding to the nerd. He's getting married. Oh, I we dance on the night we were wedding. Listen to me, listen to me. Here, half a minute, half a minute. I haven't got a licence. Are you getting married as well? I'm, I'm not well. Oh, I'm ill. That's what your mum said when she sent me up. <laughs> I know. You know she had to put me to bed last night. And what did my dad say? He's like you. He's not very well either. <laughs> How do you know? He said, that stupid son of mine, he makes me sick. <laughs> oh, like I thought he was mad at me. Well, you'd be mad if you fell over your own son in the coal shed. <laughs> How did you get in there? I don't know. I can't remember anything. What do you want, Jimmy? I've come to do your errands for you. What errands? Well, all the things you've got to do before that wedding. I've got to pick your trousers up. Why, have they fallen down? <laughs> you what? The trousers you're having altered for your monkey suit. I'll collect them for you and then I'll get a flower for your buttonhole and some confetti so you'd better give me the money now because there's the chocolate fudge as well. Oh, I tell you, hey, wait a minute, I don't want any chocolate fudge. No, but I do. <laughs> you little twister. I'll go for my trousers myself. But you're not well enough to go. Oh, of course I am. Pass me clothes. Oh, well, that's marvellous, doing poor Jim out of his lovely, rich, creamy chocolate fudge with the marzipan centre and the lovely honey-coated covering and it's all... Oh, <laughs> my poor stomach, look, sure, up. You see, I said you weren't well enough to go. Okay, all right, you can fetch me trousers. 
Right, I'll do an invitation of our Susan after you marry her. You what? I'll just go through your pockets. Now, where's your wallet? <laughs> oh, here we are. You'll find the money in there for the trousers. Right. It's 30 bob. Let me see. Alfie? Did you say there's 30 bob in here? Oh, I don't tell me. I boozed it all away last night. But isn't the 30 bob there? No, there's more like 30 pounds. Oh, yeah, what did I tell you? I put 30 pounds. Yeah, look for yourself. I didn't have that last night before I went out. How did I come to get all the 30 pounds? I don't know. Perhaps you sold something. Your watch or your motorbike. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. The barmaid. You sold the barmaid for 30 pounds? <laughs> oh. No, I vaguely remember her saying something about people who go out drinking and start leaving things lying about and losing them after they've had a few. Perhaps some bloke lost his 30 quid and I found it. In the pub? Yeah. Well, I don't remember finding it, but I must have done. So there's only one thing to do. Go to the police station and ask if anybody's lost 30 quid. Well, I've got a better idea. What's that? Go and ask him at the corner shop. Ask him what? How much chocolate fudge we can buy for 30 pounds. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Easy with that banging lads, will you please? I'm on the phone. Hello? Yeah, oh yes, it's the it's the workman demolishing the old cellars for the rebuilding. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is uh, Sergeant Jackson on the inquiry desk here. Uh, is Detective Constable Webster there? Right, uh, I'll hold on then. Come on, Alfie. This is the copper shop. The fella on Z cars used to work here. Well, what fella? Inspector Barlow. It was in this very room that he forgot himself and he had this terrible accident. What do you mean, forgot himself? He accidentally smiled and dislocated his jaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like that one. <laughs> yeah, he's good that because he doesn't smile much, does he? The miserable old... <gasps> well, oh, hello, Corporal. Uh, but will you be long on the phone? Because um, I think I've found something. Uh, just wait till I've finished, will you, sir? Okay. Yes, well, we'll wait, Sergeant. Hey, Alfie, see that door at the back there? Yeah. That leads to the cells. Is that right? Yeah. They have notices on the wall. Bed and breakfast, five bob. <laughs> Fully licensed bars in all parts. <laughs> Always closed. We never open. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I don't know you think of them. <laughs> Ooh, I'm all there with me cough drops. <laughs> anyway, that's where they lock you up through there. Hello. Yeah, well, have you any idea where he's gone? Well, I mean, what case is he on? What? Oh, the pub job. Hey, hey Jimmy, listen, that, that time I'm in through that door. It'll be the prisoners breaking out. <laughs> Don't talk, oh, Jaff, they couldn't break out of there. Oh, hey, you're right. They are breaking out. Sergeant. Now, Alfie, wait a minute. Hey, hey, Sergeant, listen. Oh, I see. You don't know which pub it is, but that's where he's making his inquiries. Sergeant, quick! Oh, just a moment, sir, please, will you? Hello? Yeah? Oh, hi, yes, he must have been a cool customer here. Yeah? But what I can gather, he, he hid on the premises till everybody had gone. Oh, oh, hey, Sergeant, please! Oh, hang on, What is it, sir? It, it, it's your prisoners. They're trying to break out in spots. I mean, they, 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 they want locking up. But again, b before they all escape... That's a demolition gang, sir. They're knocking down the old cells for the rebuilding job. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Sergeant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello? Yes, I'm still here. How much did the thief get away with last night, then? Did he? Mm. Yeah, well, I hope we catch him. Pinching money from a pub. Oh. Hey, Alfie! Uh, the, the Sergeant said, shut up. C come over here. Mm, all right, what is it? Didn't you hear what he said? They're looking for a bloke who stayed behind in a pub last night and pinched some money. Well? You were in a pub last night, and you've got 30 pounds. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, 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 but I, didn't, I, I didn't steal it. <laughs> How do you know? You keep saying you can't remember what you did. Yeah, well, you'd get five years if I had anything to do with it. You what? Five, 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 five years. But I, I didn't. I mean, I mean, I, I don't think I did. We'd better get that money put back where it belongs before they arrest you. Uh, yeah. I suppose you're right, but I still can't believe it. Me, me a thief. Yeah, uh, okay then. Cheerio. 
All right, well then, sir. Can I do for you? Yeah, but I've come to tell you that I found some money. Well, who be like? <laughs> Sorry, Alfie. Um, Mister, my friend wants to know what time's the next bus to Wigan. <laughs> bus? This is a police station. All right then. What time's the next Black Mariah? <laughs> Now, are you sure that's the pub you were in last night? The Black Bull? Of course. It's written over the door. The Black Bull. Get away. <laughs> are you certain this is the one you pinched the money from? Yeah, yes, yes, I'm, I'm positive, I think. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't remember. The, the money, not the pub, I remember that, but I don't believe it, the money. I mean, I've never been a thief before. <laughs> How do you know? You stole the money when you were drunk. For all you know, you, you rob a pub every time you have a pint. I didn't have pints, I only drank tomato juice. Tomato juice? Well, it's a good job you didn't have ginger beer. <laughs> or you'd have done another train robbery. <laughs> anyway, he's opened the pub now, so get in while the room's still empty. You're right, I will. What for? Oh, Hank, I told you come in here on the motorbike. You're going in the pub to put the £30 back in the till. Well, the landlord's in there, he'll see me. Put it in as soon as he leaves the room. But it might be hours before he wants to be executed. Leave the go out, I mean. <laughs> Just leave that to me. All right. But I still don't see how you can help. Is there anything uh, wrong with that tomato juice, sir? Eh? Oh, no. no. <laughs> well, I've just wondered, like, you know, I mean, because you've, uh, you've hardly touched it, have you? I don't want it. I mean, um, to, to drink, yeah, I'm waiting for it to go cool. <laughs> to settle. It, it's to put my head right, my hang under, be over my hang under. But, uh, aren't you going out? I'm sorry, but I'm not with you. I mean, why should I want to go out? Well, to spend a pet, get it to answer the phone. But the phone didn't ring. Howdy, partners! Everybody up to the ball, the drinks are on me. What the devil did? Down with breaches if the saloon ain't empty. Has there been a gold strike? No, oh, like the Lone Ranger strikes again. <laughs> now, just a minute. Just, what are you doing in here, Sonny? I got me a powerful first. I've been three weeks in the saddle. They call me Tender's <laughs> Oh, no. Well, get to that, landlord. I think I'll be going. You ain't going nowhere till you have a drink with Billy the Kid. Part of me's <laughs> Billy the Kid. And a glass of milk for the goat. <laughs> now look, son, clear off before I get annoyed, will you? I want a drink. If I can't have a pint of whiskey, give me a pint of brown ale. Oh, <laughs> don't be funny. Well, off a pint then. I can't serve you with beer. Well, don't just stand there. Go and find somebody who can. <laughs> <laughs> will you get out? If I come round this bar, you'll be sorry. What's through here, mister? <laughs> I keep out of there. That's the snooky room. You come in, I'll play you. I'll give you ten stock and the loser buys the pints. <laughs> you, you asked for it, my lad. Come out of there, you little old again. Oh, excuse me, sir. Well, I'll go out and get him away from the snooker table. You're right. I'll look after the till. The bar, I mean. Hey, mister. Is it all right to put all this table with the tall cloth? The cloth isn't tall. Do you want to bet? <laughs> Alfie and stop giggling. <laughs> well, it was funny. Oh dear, that bloke running into the snooker room and falling flat on his seat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I forgot to tell him I'd left the snooker balls all round the door. <laughs> Still, it gave me time to get out of the window and you to put the money back you pinched. Hey, be quiet, your mother might be. She's only in the kitchen. Oh, sorry. Of course, you wouldn't want her to know because she wouldn't let our Susan go out with a thief. Now, shut up. I, 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 I didn't know what I was doing. Nice cup of tea. Thanks. Thanks, Mum. Well, Alfie, are you all set for the wedding tomorrow? Have you got a safe place for the ring? Yes, he's going to wear it through his nose. Yes. <laughs> Very funny. No, the ring's all right, Mrs Clitheroe, but it's me trousers. I, I don't know whether he can let them down in time for me to pick them up. The, the, <laughs> the, the tailor, I mean. Pardon? Uh, he says his trousers are too short, so I told him to wear spats like old Mr Blinkinson. Oh, you can't look a right idiot in spats. Well, cut three inches off your legs, then. <laughs> Jimmy, be quiet. 
it. Well, I hope they're ready in time. Hey, that'd be something different, wouldn't it? What? At the wedding, if the best man remembered the ring and forgot his trousers. <laughs> I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Alfie, but I really wanted that bath. I've been telling you that for a week. <laughs> Be so cheeky. That's enough of that, Jimmy. Sit down, Susan, I'll get you a cup of tea. Is Grandad ready yet? Yes, he's coming down now, Mother. Hey, what are you putting the light on for? It's still daylight. Because I want to look at my face in the mirror. There's bravery for you, Alfie. <laughs> Oh, that bathroom mirror. My lipstick's all crooked. Nah, it looks all right to me. Of course your lipstick's all right. It's a face that's crooked. <laughs> hey, now, that'll do. Any more cracks in your head'll be crooked. Oh, yes. Well, if we're talking about being crooked, I know a fella who went into a pub and... We don't want to know about me. Um, yet. Uh, uh, let, let's go, Susan. I haven't put my face on yet. Of course she hasn't, Alfie. That's not her face. She's breaking it in for a horse. <laughs> You're going to get such a smack in a minute. Hello, hello. I see you two are at it again. Every time I walk in, I, I, I crack your growing. Well, that's because you wear rubber soles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now, let's have no more of your comedy. Here's your tea, Susan. Oh, and yours, Father. Oh, Thanks, thank my dear. You. I'll pour a cup for myself now and rest my feet for a minute. What, in the teacup? <laughs> oh, no. oh, did you hear that, Mum? Three of them shouting at me. Oh, shut up. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Well, if that's the way you all feel... Jimmy, will you... I know, shut up. <laughs> Please, can we have a bit of peace and quiet? Well, I'll be away in ten minutes. Ah, so will we. Well, what time is it? Ten minutes to opening time. Shut, shut up! up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you're a wee scan. Hey, they're talking about opening time. Did you hear about the robbery last night? Oh, what robbery? At the pub. Oh, you heard? No. But yes, I mean. <laughs> what was it, Father? Well, somebody hid in the pub till after closing time and then emptied the till. At the Rose and Crown? No. The Black Bull? The Red Lion. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the Red Lion. <laughs> It couldn't be. It was a black bull when I got the money. But behind it! Sorry, Althea. My foot slipped. Are you sure, Grandad? Of course. I was talking to one of the regulars this morning. Althea, will you come out here a minute? What for? Uh, to uh, look at my bike, at the lamp uh, that you want to see if you can mend. You are. So we don't have any trouble with the police. The police. Ah, but, but, but I didn't... Oh, you mean about the robber? We'll harm it! Yes, come on. It won't be a minute. You better not be. We're going out. Well, don't worry, Susan. I won't be long. Only 20 years if they catch you. <laughs> you dope. You put the money back in the wrong pub. I, I, I don't remember going to the Red Lion. Well, you did. Think. What's the last thing you remember? Yeah, uh, singing. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking, oh, how we dance, and I, I felt the bang on my head. Somebody hit you with a bottle? No, no, with the floor. I, mean, I, I, I fell on me. Oh, forget it. Anyway, you've got to start thieving again. What do you mean? You've got to steal the money back from the black bull to pay the red lion. Come on, you can get there just the open again. Ah, but, but, but Susan's waiting for me. Oh, she can see you on visiting day. <laughs> yeah, uh, tomato juice, please. Oh, it's you again, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, but, 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 I want a tomato juice, quick, please. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, so you're an early bird, aren't you? First in before dinner, and now first in tonight. Yeah, well, I, I needed a drink. Uh, you know, you're the first tomato juice addict I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, didn't drink the one you ordered at dinner time, did you? you no, know, no, well, that, that's why I'm so thirsty now, is that. Uh, here's your money. Oh, sir, uh, yeah. I was just thinking, you know, I mean, uh, you ought to start Tomatoes Anonymous, you know, for when you get a craving for tomato juice, like, you know. Yeah, here's your change, love. Yeah, when you, uh, when you feel you can't hold out any longer, like, for another tomato juice, ring me up and I'll bring a bottle of whiskey around and get you drunk. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't lie to you. Oh, oh, I see you now, that's very, yeah. very funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is ye, drink and be merry. Cheerio, buddy.
put himself a mud in your eye. <laughs> Eat, drink and be merry. So I'll have a tickle of pint and a pie. You again? That's right. A large pint in a bucket and go easy on the froth. <laughs> Out of my way, I'll get you this time. I'll come outside then and I'll fight you for a pint of the hard stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll rob the till. I mean, I'll, I'll look after the till, the, the, the bar, I mean. That's all right, sir, but I don't usually open this little room until about seven. Oh, well, well I, I like drinking on my own, you see. <laughs> so, you, you don't know me? No, sir, I don't remember seeing you here in the Red Lion before. Well, that's funny, because I don't remember being in here before. <laughs> <laughs> well, as they say, it must have been two other fellas. <laughs> Here's your tomato juice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here's 30 pounds. I mean, a pound note. <laughs> but who, who, who said it was two other fellas? Well, no one, it's the same. Wait a minute, were you here on Thursday night? Well, I thought so, because otherwise I couldn't have robbed the, 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 heard about the robbery. Oh, well, I was off on Thursday night, so I couldn't have seen you. Ah, well, nobody saw me, see, because it was after the pub closed. The, 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 the robbery, I mean, was after you closed. <laughs> they said. <laughs> <laughs> you watch. A double, double, double whiskey and a large bottle of aspirin in it. Now come on, Sonny, clear off. I want some service, a jug of gin. All right, get out. A dump dump full of rum. <laughs> Will you get out of the bar? Well, fill me cat with fire water. <laughs> if I come round there, I'll turn your eye for you. That does it. Excuse me, sir, while I sort him out. Yeah, that's all right. I'll look after the bar. I mean, the till. I mean, the bar. Isn't this the Red Lion? Yes, it is. Well, give us a bite of jungle juice. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Susan was annoyed, Alfie, so she's gone on on her own. Oh, I... It's your own fault, Alfie. You shouldn't have dashed out without telling her. Mum, I c couldn't tell her where I was going. Why not? Because I was going to rob a pub. See, see, see a pub. I was in a, in a pub. For a tomato juice. Oh, don't be... Did you say rob a pub? Yes, but not really. I mean, it, it was my money. Well, not mine, but I, I put it in the till after I stole it. No, not from there, from the Red Lion, not the Black Bull. But I got drunk in the Black Bull and robbed the Red Lion on it. I don't remember, but I must have done because it was in my trousers. What was the Red Lion? No, the Black Bull. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the money. Oh, I don't know. Ma'am, if that's the police, he's pleading guilty but insane. <laughs> Alfie, Alfie, look, just calm down and tell me when I get back. You dope! How you've done it, telling me, ma'am? Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I, I feel better. It, it's in my mind all the time. So what? There's plenty of room for it. There's no brains there. <laughs> it's the happy bridegroom. Hello, Alfie. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Have you come to tell Alfie he's sacked his best man? <laughs> oh, no. I couldn't replace Alfie. Oh, I don't know. The vicar's dog's pretty clever. <laughs> well, why not? He could carry the ring and wag his tail at the same time. That's more than you can do. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, look, Alfie, I just called to check on a couple of things for tomorrow. Now, did you confirm the, the taxis and the flowers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, you ordered the extra wine? Yeah. yeah. And you paid for it all? Yeah, that, well, that's what you, you want. Well, to pay, pay, pay for it. Did you want me to pay for it? Yeah, well, of course I did. Why do you think I gave you the £30 on Thursday night? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You, you gave me thirty pounds. Well, you know I did. I mean, you mean it wasn't the pub b b pinched? I, I, I didn't stink. I'm not a thief. <laughs> no, you're just a raving nutcase. <laughs> Come on, you dope. Where? To get your thirty pounds, I'll have to go on the booze again. By the time we're finished, I'll have been thrown out of more pubs than me granddad. <laughs> No 
Games and Gold with the Clitheroe Kid this week, where Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan, with Derek Guiler, Jack Watson, and David Richardson. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. Well, we got the money back. My man went with us and explained... The man in the pub said he thought it was funny the thief put in 30 quid back because he only stole 15. <laughs> anyway, we got everything sorted out for the wedding, except Alfie. Oh, he got there with the ring and his trousers on, but he was so excited and the bride was so nervous that when the vicar said, Will you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? She couldn't speak. And Alfie said, I will. <laughs> It's all right, though. My granddad said Alfie and Jack will be able to get a divorce in no time. ta -da! present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Another Mother for Ozzy. Jimmy Clitheroe, you'll apologise to Mr Higginbottom and you'll stop telling all these lies. But Mum, I thought it was true. I mean, Mrs Higginbottom has gone away from home, hasn't she? Yes, but she's only gone to Wigan, not Australia. Your Ozzy will be disappointed. I told him he'd probably be getting a kangaroo for Christmas. There you are. He needs a good belt in. Spreading nasty rumours about me and the missus. Every time I show me face in the street, people start sniggering. No wonder with your clock. <laughs> what? Uh, it's behind the clock. The letter. I'm just going to post it for my granddad. Never mind the letter. Who told you about Mrs Higginbotham leaving home? Uh, the vicar at Sunday school. The vicar told you? Well, he didn't exactly tell me. He was telling my teacher and I accidentally dropped my hymn book near these keyholes. Oh. <laughs> I might have known. Listen, Clitheroe, the next time you do any earwigging, make sure you get the facts right. My wife's gone to Wigan to assist us to meet a brother who's home on holiday from Australia. She's not chucked me for a sheep farmer in Wagga Wagga. <laughs> what? How dare you, Jimmy? Oh, yes. Uh, come in, Mrs Butterworth. Oh, ta, Pat. I wanted to catch Higgy, and I saw his taxi outside your house. Oh, that's all right, Flory. Come in and sit down. No, I won't stop. I brought Higgy a few buns. Jimmy told me about his wife being away. I hope you didn't believe all those lies, Flory. Lies? Well, Jimmy said he'd gone to Wigan to her sister's to meet her brother from Australia. Oh, did he? Yes, I told you the truth, didn't I, Flory? I mean, Mrs Butterworth. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, I've never seen the brother. What did the brat say about the wife's brother? Well, he may be coming from Australia, but I'm sure he wouldn't be covered with paint with a bone through his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> what a description. It reminded me of a woman I knew on the stage. Fatima, the flaming fire eater. <laughs> she used to cover herself with shoe polish and wear a leopard skin. Well, one night she was swallowing a fire, she hiccuped, and a spark flew out of her mouth right onto her leopard skin. <laughs> well, she was just going to whip it off, when what do you think happened? Uh, Jimmy, the envelope behind the clock. <laughs> uh, I've got it, Grandad. I'll write all this down on the bike. <laughs> oh, it was a scream. Well, if they hadn't sprayed her with that fire extinguisher, she'd have been arresting for moving while... Uh, Jimmy, you're... <laughs> it's uh, time to go and post that letter. What? I missed the last bit of the joke? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, perhaps it's just as well, Jimmy. Well, I'll be off now. Ah, uh, so will I. And you watch it, young Clitheroe. Oh, don't worry. I'll be very careful from now on. You'd better be. From now on, if you put a foot wrong, I'll cut it off. I'll see that it doesn't cause any more trouble. Aye, and I'll see you in the Rosen Crown tonight, Higgy. Well, come on, Higgy. I want a word with you in private. Ta-ta, everybody. Ta-ra, Mrs Butterworth. 
Nice to have seen you again, Mr. Riggenbottom. Belt up. <laughs> Come on, missus. Now then, what is it, Mrs. Butterworth? Oh, flurry to you. Hey, listen, your boss has been on the phone to me again. Who, Mr. Whiteside? Yes, handsome Harry Whiteside. Taxi proprietor, man about town, bachelor gay, and man of extreme good taste. What's that supposed to mean? Well, he fancies me, doesn't he? Ah. <laughs> ah, so it seems. Is he after another date? Yes, tonight, I think. He's going to let me know definitely after tea. Well, he's done a good thing there. I mean, he's single, lives in that big house, owns a fleet of a dozen taxis, and he's got money to burn. And I'm just the one to start a bonfire. <laughs> He'll have his hands full if ever he marries you. You're a rum cup of cocoa, no mistake. <laughs> hey, did he say where he was taking you? Ah, yes. To that posh country club outside town. Well, he'll meet me there. One of his taxis will call for me. Oh, I expect, I expect that'll be me. He said he might be wanting me for a special job tonight. Well, I'll let you know after he phones me. Ah, well then, I'll look forward to changing into my best clobber and whipping you up to the country club. Who's that in the dock? Alfie, is that you and our Susan snogging? No, it's me and Mrs Butterworth. <laughs> oh, well, uh, don't mind me. <laughs> Carry on, snogging. <laughs> Jimmy, don't you go round telling stories about me and Mr Higginbottom. We're just good friends. Yes, just remember that. Oh, I'll remember. I'll tie a knot in me hanky. You do that. Because if I hear you spreading any more gossip, I'll tie a knot in your windpipe. <laughs> Jimmy Clitheroe, would you mind telling me why I'm standing here cold and wet outside Ingy Bottom's back door? That's easy. We didn't get any answer at the front door. Oh, <laughs> look, what have you come to Ingy Bottom's for? I've told you. He left those buns behind at our house, and my mum said I've got to see you get some. Ah, well, we've knocked and knocked, and he didn't answer. Well, what are we going to do? Wait a minute. Uh, let me feel under the mat. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Here it is. What's that, a key? Yep, I remember Ozzy telling me, when Mr Higginbottom goes to the pub and he's late back, his wife leaves this key under the mat. What, you mean for Mr Higginbottom? No, for the dustman who fetches him home on his cart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Old Iggy coming home from the pub on the dust cart. <laughs> yes, with all the other rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I can't reach the lock. You open the door for me. Yeah, right, yeah, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, with all the other rubbish, I like that. <laughs> now, find the light switch. It's on the left somewhere. Ooh, like it's dark. I'll, I'll, I'll just feel along the wall. Hey, what's that horrible smell? It can't be Ozzy. Is it his aunties? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Mrs Higginbottom's away in Wigan. Yes, that only leaves Higgy, the old bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, just shut up while I find the switch. Got you. <laughs> what's going on? Bam, 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 he's here, Jimmy, me, 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 Mr. Bear. <laughs> we, we, we didn't know you were in your dustbin, you kid. What? <laughs> Where's the light? That's better. Now, what's the idea of breaking in here? And it'd better be a good story, or I'll belt you one. Right, uh, tell him, Alfie. Yeah, well, well, you see, you, you left your buns at Jimmy's and we tried your door and came round to the back because that's where the dustman keeps the key to bring in when he's drunk. Eh? I mean... <laughs> We wanted to leave your buns in a safe place and we came in the kitchen in the dark, but we knew where we were because it smells something horrible in it, Gabby. <laughs> I've just been cooking Ozzy a meal. Oh, now we know what the smell is, don't we, Alfie? Look, I burnt some fat on the gas ring. What's Ozzy having with it, Chips? <laughs> I'll part your hair with that rolling pin in a minute. Well, that's nice. After we've taken the trouble to bring your buns for you... If you two are still here after I've answered that phone, I'll have the police after you for breaking and entering. Now clear up the pair of you. Right. That does it. He's asked for it. What are you going to do? Pinch one of his bums. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, it's you, Mrs Butterworth. Oh, all right then. Flory. Uh, what time shall I pick you up tonight then? <laughs> Half past seven. <laughs> right, it's a date, Flory, look. <laughs> yes. Just a minute till I close shut this door. Hey, hey, it sounds like he's making a date with her. I know, they're going out together. He's taking her to that country club near the gasworks. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? I 
you know, I didn't tell her when they were snogging in our bushes. Snogging? What, M Missy Butterworth and old Iggy? Yeah. Get away, his wife, and never stand for the go. Oh, hey, she's away in Wigan, isn't she? Yeah. It's funny him taking Florrie out like that. Ozzy says he never takes Mrs. Higginbottom anywhere. He said the only time his dad took his mum to the country was to pick potatoes at two bob an hour. <laughs> yeah, but you see, th this is different. I know Higginbottom's sort. I had an uncle just like him. My auntie had to go away for a few days, and when she got back, she found that my uncle had met an old girlfriend, and he'd gone off with her to live in... live in... What? Yeah, Huddersfield, I think. <laughs> <laughs> tidied up the front room, what shall we do next? <laughs> I mean about the tennis club annual meeting. You did say it was tomorrow night. Well, that's what the chairman told me on Friday. Give us a kiss. Look, I'm club secretary and I've got to get everything ready. Where did I put those minutes? Oh, never mind those minutes. Just give me a few minutes. <laughs> Stop it, will you? <laughs> Sorry to disturb you two, but I've come for the rent. What rent? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, me granddad has let you have this room for five bob an hour to snog in, hasn't he? Now get out, will you? Get out! You know, miss, you not only look like me sister Susan, but you've got a rotten temper like her as well. What are you talking about? She is your sister. And you, sir, you're the living image of my sister's daft boyfriend, Alfie Hall. I am a daft boyfriend, you twit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's Susan and I'm me. You're Alfie. We're not somebody else. But you can't be Susan and Alfie, because right now Susan and Alfie are at a tennis club meeting. The meeting isn't until tomorrow. Are you sure? Yeah, it's tomorrow, Wednesday. So will you just clear out and... Alfie! What? Today's Wednesday. Is it? Well, fancy that, because that's the day they're having the tennis club... club... <laughs> that's what you want, a club round your nut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ex Susan, I'm sorry. We should have been there at seven. It's ten past now. Oh, I'm going upstairs to get ready. Right, yeah, Susan. Oh, she's mad at me again. Well, never mind, Alfie. Come in the living room. We'll play a good game I've just thought of. What's that? Well, you hide half a crown in my trouser pocket, and if I find it, it's mine. <laughs> Well, it's nice of you to lend me this handbag, Pat. It'll just go right with my costume. Oh, not at all, Florrie. I must say, you look very smart. Oh, he'll fall for you, whoever he is. Ah, it must be a heavy date, all right. Can we be expecting to hear wedding bells soon, Florrie? Perhaps, if I don't drop a clangor. <laughs> oh, hello, Jimmy. Yeah, hello, Mrs Butterworth. Hey, you look smart. For a minute, I thought it was that lady we were watching on your telly last night. The one all dressed up. Oh, you mean Katie Boyle? No, uh, Mrs. Shufflewick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fell for that all right. Oh, and how are you, Mr. Hall? Oh, I'm all right, Lady Shufflewick. Olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Butterworth. <laughs> Is something the matter with him, Jimmy? Yeah, he's in the doghouse with our Susan. So if your boyfriend lets you down tonight, I think Alfie might be going spare. No. <laughs> I don't think there's much danger of me being jilted. Well, he seems to think the world of me, strange though it may seem. <laughs> well, I must be off. Thanks again, Pat. I'll let myself out. Bye-bye, Gloria. Have a nice evening. Enjoy yourself. I will. Cheerio. Cheerio, Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about that? I've never seen her dressed up to the nines like that before. <laughs> You're right, Pat. Whoever this fellow is, he's certainly made an impression on Florrie, all right. I wonder who he is. Don't you know? It's Mr. Higginbottom. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hick... Now, Jimmy, you've been warned about telling lies about Ozzy's father. It's true, ma'am. We heard him fixing a date for tonight with her, didn't we, Alfie? Yeah. You, you what, Jimmy? Isn't Mr. Higginbottom picking Florrie Butterworth up at half past seven and taking her to the country club? Oh, yeah, it's terrible. While the cat's away, the big rat's playing about with Mrs. Merriweather. <laughs> now, don't start thinking the worst before you're sure. If people don't look for scandal, they won't see any. I believe in minding my own business. I believe in minding my own business. <laughs> That's what me granddad said, Alfie. Yeah, I know that. If people don't look for scandal, they won't see any. And there he is at the window, with his eyes popping out like gobstoppers. <laughs> what was that?
that, Jimmy? I, I said, uh, I think I'll pop out for some gobstoppers. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. The shops are closed. Here's your tea, Father. Just leave it on the table, Pat, thanks. If you want to have your tea, Grandad, I'll stand guard at the window. <laughs> you keep away from that window, they'll think. We're spying on them. Well, we are, aren't we? <laughs> well, your mother doesn't want them to think we're a lot of nosy parkers. So we just have one nosy parker, me granddad. Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh, my. Higginbottom certainly got himself dolled up to take Florrie out. He's wearing his new cap and a navy blue blazer. What, no trousers? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're a lad, you are. One must see what Florrie's wearing. I'll go and get you the camera, ma'am. Then you can sell pictures to the neighbours. <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. Well, why is it they'll only think we're spying if I look? What's happening, Mr Sinclair? Higgy's helping Florrie into the taxi. He's holding her arm. Well, what do you expect him to hold her foot? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't have believed it, but there they are in the taxi. It just shows you. They're barefaced about it. I mean, they don't know who might be watching them. I know. All the grown-ups in the street will be watching them. While they're telling the kids, keep away from the window and don't be nosy. <laughs> all right, all right, funny boy. I just wanted to be sure that you were telling the truth. And I think it's disgusting. What, me telling the truth? <laughs> no, that's a miracle. Y your granddad means it's disgusting, a married man going off with another woman. Oh, you, you mean like your uncle? Alfie's uncle went out with another woman when his wife was away, didn't he, Alfie? Y yes, but, but... Alfie, but... you shouldn't tell Jimmy things like that. Oh, I can keep a secret, ma'am. <laughs> he went away to live in... That'll do. <laughs> How dare you tell him about that, Alfie? Well, but, but, but I didn't. I mean, I mean, I, but, but, I, I just... Uh... What's wrong with living in Huddersfield? It's not that. My uncle was a married man. Well, aren't there any married men in Huddersfield? <laughs> <laughs> Look, son, when a man is married, he can't just, well, change his wife for another woman. No, not unless he's a film star. <laughs> He's got you there, Pat. It's all right if you get a divorce from a judge. Well, perhaps Mr Higginbottom's got one. He was up for speeding last week. He, he, he might have got a divorce at the same time to save two journeys. <laughs> oh, son, you've got a lot to learn. <laughs> so has Mrs Higginbottom. <laughs> Hey, if Mr. Riggingbottom marries Mrs. Butterworth, will Ozzy have to change his name to Butterbottom? <laughs> Stop shaking, he'll have me back off its stand. <laughs> and now we proudly present Tunnock Clitheroe, the world's champion wall of death rider. Oh, look, stop turning the handlebars about. I'm trying to tighten a knot. Oh, hey, what a sight. A spanner with a loose nut at both ends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think when the fair was here, the wall of death rider had a monkey on the pillion. So what? Uh, well, how about you teaming up with me? No, oh, shut up. <laughs> Hey, here comes Florrie Butterworth, Higginbottom's dream girl. Although with her curlers in, she looks more like a nightmare. <laughs> Hello there, you two. Hey, what have you been doing with your motorbike, Alfie? Mending it? No, milking it. <laughs> oh, you are cheeky. Mrs Butterworth, when you get married, remember I like wedding cake and I'm very good at parties. I know lots of games. Oh, yes, like, like at my birthday. Fireman's knock. Every time he opened the door, he squirted you with his water pistol. <laughs> now you're jumping the gun. I'm not even engaged yet. Anyway, I can't stop here chatting. I came to see your mother. I'll go round the back. But uh, if we do decide to name the day, you're all invited to a party. When Mrs Higginbottom finds out what's going on, they won't be hearing wedding bells. It'll be the funeral march. <laughs> hey, hey, I wouldn't like to be Mrs Butterworth. I should think not. The vicar would have a right laugh. Marrying you and Higginbottom. <laughs> hey, talking about laughing, 
Our Susan's face has just come round the corner. Who oh, has it? Now, shut up, you. There's nothing funny about Susan's face, and don't you forget it. I wish I could forget it. It haunts me. <laughs> I've warned you, you'll get a clout. Hello, what's the trouble with my cheeky brother now? Nothing. Alfie was just talking about you. Yeah, well, I mean, not talking about you, just, just talking. Yeah, about your face. That's right. He said it's no joke having a face like yours. Exactly. No, I didn't. Look, I said it wasn't funny. Having a face like hers. Yes, no. He's twisting me words, Susan. I know. He wants his neck twisting. Anyway, ignore him, Alfie. Was that Mrs Butterworth going round the back? Yes, yeah, she's going to see your mother. Well, I don't know how she dare show her face, the way people are talking. Well, you show yours and Alfie talks about... Yeah, but I'm sure. <laughs> uh, who's talking about it, Susan? Well, only five minutes ago, Mrs Billington was on about her. Beaky Billington? Oh, she can talk with her nose. You can't see her face for the shadow from a hooter. <laughs> She wasn't talking about Mrs. Butterworth's face. It was about her going out with Mr. Higginbottom. Mrs. Billington saw them coming out of the country club the other night with their arms around each other, all lovey-dovey. Well, of course, it'll be all round the town now. Oh, you're not kidding. Here is the nine o'clock scandal, and this is Parrot Conk spreading it. <laughs> yeah, you've got some up there. <laughs> Don't laugh, Alfie. He thinks he's funny enough. Anyway, I'd better get in the house and have a wash. Right, old mucky nectar off. <laughs> oh, cut it out. I'll come in as soon as I fix this nut. Try hitting him with a hammer. See you later. Oh, very good. Alfie, you've got one there. She's a witty little... A witty little what? I'm not sure. I, I think she's a girl. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you keep quiet? If I had done, Scragging Neck wouldn't have had any news to tell you. Beaky Billington didn't even know it was Mr Higginbottom with Florrie Butterworth. It was too dark to see. Mm. How did she find out? I told her. <laughs> she was talking to the vicar and said, Mrs Butterworth seems to have got a new man friend. I said, it's Mr Higginbottom. He's not new, he's second hand. <laughs> I don't know about Beaky, you're the scandal monger. Hey, up now, watch, this, watch what you say, Mrs Butterworth's coming back. Me? Blabbermouth who blurts things out. You nearly called her Jessie Bell yesterday because my granddad said it. I did not, and the name is Jessie Bell. Hello, Mrs. Butterworth. You didn't stay long. No, because nobody asked me to. Your mother and granddad seem in a very funny mood. They hardly spoke. Neither did Susan. Have you upset them or something? Me? No. But somebody has, haven't they, Alfie? Yes. Who? Y you have. I mean, I, th I think, but well, maybe, um, um, unless it was me. Look, what do you mean? I'll tell you, the cross with you, because he's married. Who? Your boyfriend. And you can't blame him. I mean, well, it's not right, is it, taking another woman's husband? Another woman's husband? What do you think I am? Uh, what's that word, Alfie? A Jezebel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but, but you said... I, 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 I didn't say it. M Mr Sinclair did. I mean, he was... Well, oh, did he? Now, look, where have you got this nonsense about my gentleman friend being married? We know he is. And he's no gentleman. His son's as old as Jimmy. His son? Yeah, and you can't have a son if you're not married, can you, Alfie? No. Well, I mean, of course you can't, but, but I mean, no, no. <laughs> but Mr Higginbottom assured me he was single. Well, Higginbottom's a liar. He's married. And Alfie will tell him, won't you? Yes, I bet. No, I won't. <laughs> no, but I will. I'll do more than tell him I'm going round to his house now and he'll feel the weight of my hand. And after that, I'll deal with the other one. Hey, Alfie, she's going to clout Ozzy as well. <laughs> Biggin bottoms, you could take us round to see the fight. I'm no friend of that woman chaser anymore. But she's chasing him now, probably with a frying pan. Look, you're not going anywhere near that man's house. But anyway, she'll have knocked him out by now. I mean, the way she looked when she dashed off. Well, we, we might get there in time to see a cloud Ozzy. Look, nobody's taking you because nobody wants to see a fight. Only a savage would stand and watch somebody being hurt. Mother, it's Mrs. Butterworth and Mr. Higginbottom. Never mind the introductions. Let me get my hands on him. There you are, you little brat. I'll fear Mr. Higginbottom, won't you? <laughs> what do you want? Shut up, stupid. 
<laughs> you little troublemaker, come here. Take your hands off him, Higginbottom. What's the idea of busting in like this? Now calm yourself, Iggy. Calm down. I'm sorry, Missus, but I warned this this this, this son of yours. About spreading lies about me? All right, uh, please explain what all this is about, but quietly. Well, Jimmy told me that my gentleman friend was married. So? So he is. I know Mr. Riggenbottom's married. Ozzy told me. Well, how does Ozzy know? Was he at the wedding? You know, I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, why, why should he tell you? Well, it's not a secret, is it? They've been married years before Ozzy was even born. <laughs> Flory, will you explain? Well, I've been going out with Mr Higginbottom's boss. And you're Jimmy and Alfie. His boss? But he took you to the country club. Yeah, well, we heard you making the date. I took her to meet my boss. But according to Ozzy and Mrs Billington and the vicar, I've been carrying on with Flory here. And that brat told them. And I'm going to belt the living daylights out of him. Help! Stop it, Mr. Higginbottom. Yes, if there's any punishing to do, I'll do it. Well, start with Alfie and then hit yourself. <laughs> you said she was a disgrace when you two were spying on them from the window. <laughs> oh, so you've all been at it, have well, you? <laughs> really, Peter, and you, Pat. No, just a minute. Well, we, we understood that, uh, well, that... Uh... We heard that you'd made a date, so naturally we... We, well, when we happened to see you getting into his taxi... Happened to see them? Shut up. <laughs> yes, we just presumed it was true. Yeah, and, and that's what I did. Presumed, I mean, not Luke, because I, mean, I didn't want to be a nosy Parker because we had one. I mean... <laughs> Look, we made a dreadful mistake and we're very sorry. Yes, we're very sorry. Well, now they said they're sorry, let's all forget it and have a cup of tea. Not on your life. Oh, I shouldn't have said tea. You have a brown ale. <laughs> Look, none of this would have started but for little scandal monger here. That's where the suspicions came from. Now, Iggy, they've all made mistakes and they've apologised, so let's forget it. Well, I'm willing to forget it for one. He hasn't apologised yet. I had jollipies, I had jollipies, I had jollipies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see, he's a jollipie. I feel a jollipie. Jo 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 he said he's sorry and so am I. Mr Higginbottom, you're wanted on the phone. Me? All oh, right. I wonder who wants me. It's probably the zoo. <laughs> That'll do. You just think yourself lucky that you got away with this. Yes, my lad. And I hope you'll learn to keep your mouth shut in the future. Yeah, and I'll keep my ears shut when he talks to me. It'll still go in through the hole in your head. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you're incorrigible. That does it. That's the last straw that breaks the camel's back. Hello, he's got the hump again. <laughs> what is it now? That was the wife. She's come home with her brother. And she's waiting for me with a rolling pin. And he's got his Australian boomerang. What for? To clobber me. Because Ozzy wrote and said I was getting a divorce and marrying Flory. Well, uh, fancy that. Yes. And guess who told him to write? <laughs> you! Help! Grandad, you don't Come want here. to see if I... Come here! I'm your guts for garters. Come here! Me. I'll tear your limb from... He's gone. But I'll catch him sometime. If my granddad's going to the fish shop, I'll have a two fish cakes and six pennies. Keep it in the oven till I get back. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan. With Molly Sugden as Flory Butterworth and Tony Melody as Mr Higginbottom. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the Kid himself. <laughs> about for two hours. My fish cakes were dried up to nothing by the time Wild Bill Higginbottom left. It just shows how mad he was. He didn't leave our house till the pub had been open for an hour. <laughs> Grandad said another ten minutes and the landlord would have sent out a search party. <laughs> Ta-ra!